live from New York and Wisconsin. This is Hangout Conversations with Matt Rappaport coming to you from a Google Plus Hangout on air live. I was informed by last week's or Plus Team and Show's special guest, Lynette Young. Hey, Lynette, that we are on YouTube live, which is youtube.com backslash live. Is that you? Oh. That was my own voice. Weird. That's probably my, I probably have a, you're watching, I probably have a YouTube open. And uh, I do. Blame it on Rappaport, there we go. Um, you probably couldn't hear it because it was all, it was all my mind. I heard my own voice like Malkovich, Malkovich. Thanks to everybody for watching. Awesome to have you here on Hangout Conversations. The picture that you see right now is from our guest tonight, Scott Detweiler. Hopefully I said his name A correctly, A1 correct. And uh, I like to screw up names here on Hangout Conversations. But thanks for joining us. I'm just going to give it just a one minute so I can reshare. If you're watching on YouTube, awesome. If you're watching on Google+, Plus, that is great as well. Uh, tell us in Google+, Plus if you have any photography skills, if you know any photographers, if you have any questions for me or Scott, especially Scott, uh, uh, check out his page. He's got some great photos besides the one you see currently. And you can ask him about specific photos. You can ask him his style, about, about Photoshop, about software. And check out his page. Check out hangoutconversations.com and YouTube backslash New York Actor M11 is where you'll find it on YouTube, our main show right now. And I am type raping you. And I am sharing. Meryl, Meryl, I wish we had some theme music. We're working on that. I know. I think that's the running joke of Hangout Conversations is that we're working on the theme music. All right, again, live from New York, live from Wisconsin, it's Hangout Conversations. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hangout Conversations. Welcome back to number 29, episode number 29, I believe. I can't believe it. Almost three decades worth of episodes, I mean, since September. And here we are on Google+. Plus. I got the, the special curl, the plus curl over here, but I did specifically know I didn't. It just happened. Uh, and we're on YouTube, and we're on Google+, Plus, and we're all over the, the interwebs, so that's pretty awesome. The new G Plus design, that is what's going on. Everybody is getting used to it. It's been around a little over a week. And are you used to it? They changed the gray comments to be black comments, which a lot of people appreciate it. And I'm very excited about that. So everyone can read their comments, get through their stream. Let me know if you can get through your stream, if you're having issues. I know boxes are bigger and uh, things are moved around. Uh, but let me know, what about Hangout apps? Any cool Hangout apps that we missed? I'm using Comment Tracker right now. And I don't see... I'm hitting, I see that the names of the posts, but I don't actually see actual comments, show comments. Oh, now I see comments. I see Yasmin is watching and Rudy Bravo. Thank you for swinging and waggles, waggles the eyebrows. Appreciate that. So it's working pretty well, different colors. What apps are out there? Let me know. I know there's a penguin game and there's some, there's some backgammon and some poker. Last week's guest, Glenn Rogers, awesome movie rip. Uh, his conversation is plus and his episode is up right now. As well as that wacky, fun, and plus team and show with me, Jane Ellen, Matt Mikowski, uh, Lynette Young, like I mentioned. Congratulations, Lynette, Lynette Young. You passed 1 million followers. And uh, Alex Balcazar, because he has a beard, and I had no idea who Alex Balcazar was. I actually thought he was a made up man, but he is real. There's a lot of madness, so check that out on youtube.com backslash hangout conversations. But tonight's guest, I met at a hangout. He was showing his work, like you saw before, like you, you can see his really cool picture millions of colors. He loves, he loves colors. He loves hair. He loves women, people. And uh, it was amazing to see his work. He's not only a Photoshop specialist living in Wisconsin, but he owns his own software development company as well. He's an all-around nice guy, and not just because his profile told me that. He is the conceptual portrait photographer here on Google+. Plus. He's Mr. Scott Detweiler. Welcome to Conversations with Matt Rappaport. Scott Detweiler, everybody. There he is. There he is. Oh, no, that's a woman. Oh, there he is. Wait. Oh, he's black. No, he's white. <laughs> it should be working. Oh, my God. You're darked out. Uh, we'll, fix your, we'll figure it out here. Yeah, that's the magic. Scott is actually a magician, but he's, he's, a, he's not just a magician with his art. He's a magician with what he does. Oh, there he is. Hey, Scott yeah, Detweiler with the lower thirds. How are you? <laughs> I'm peachy. <laughs> peachy is good. It's, it actually kind of looks like you are physically like on ABC News or something with your lower thirds and the, the lamp going and the, you have the flavor, the atmosphere. Yeah, this is just a big painting back here. It's completely fake. You made that up. You used your photography and you got it going. 
Yeah. You Photoshop. What, what what was the most photoshopped? Was it the lamp? Was it the brightness of the lamp? Or oh, that was easy. It was the plant. Plant took me forever. Plants. All right, that makes sense. So how the heck are you? Welcome to the show. Uh, wow, I met you. Uh, I believe Tim Clary was in the hangout that I met you in. You were showing and maybe Cliff Roth. And you were showing some of your pictures. Mm -hmm. Could have been that. Was it the soda can hangout? Do you remember that? Or yeah, yep, digital painting. Uh, digital painting. Yep, you know, digital. Uh, uh, Daniel Ibanez has a uh, digital painting class every Tuesday night on Google Plus Live, and we chit chat and show different stuff and uh, learn a lot. Actually, I think digital painting is a huge plus to improving my photography, and photographers in general should benefit from it. And he does a wonderful class, and uh, I, I think that's kind of where we met, running around there. Yeah, I just jumped in. I was I saw it going on, and uh, I looked at your work, and the, the first one that I really noticed was the one with the motorcycle and the, and the skyline in the background. And I noticed that you had a thing for women, so that was kind of cool. Who doesn't? And even women love. Even women say women's bodies are better than men's, so. though. But uh, it's cool. So you basically have been on Google Plus and going right after putting your photography out there, putting yourself out there, and. How has your experience so far been on this platform? You've been here since pretty much the summer, or? Yeah, I was in beta, early beta, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't really use it that much. You know, just that's the excuse that everybody says. You know, I'm on mm -hmm. it, but I don't use it. Uh, in uh, I just I think it was in October, um, August or October time frame, and I started to kind of pick it back up again, and and it's actually become my my platform of choice now. My my Facebook fan base is uh, kind of ignored right now because I'll post uh, a link to a Google Plus article on my Facebook and say if you want to read about it or see it, it's, it's here. Um, you know, that the, the unfriendly compression that Facebook does to photos is just not, not acceptable to you know, photographers to look at that and see what it crushes, you know, the, the life out of your photo or it's meant for cell phone photos and, and that's fine. Uh, but Google Plus is paying attention more to the the depth and, and the, you know they're sensitive to the compression algorithms they use for the photos that I posted anyway. I know don't get severely messed up or color altered. I like to do it on Facebook. So yeah, I love it. It's become uh, my my home away from home. So Flickr's kind of uh, always been there, but uh, I've kind of been ignoring that as well. In truth. Cool. Yeah, I was going to get into all the different websites and how they are for photography and stuff like that. We can we can start now if you want. If you want to talk about that now, I was but but I was going to talk more about you and your own life first before we get into the whole, before we dissect Pinterest and, and Flickr and Tumblr and, and, and every single place you could put your same picture a million times. Uh, what, when did you, so you discovered Hangouts uh, when you first got here or when you came back or like what, how did you get into Hangouts and start showing your work? Like what made you get in, into well, it? Well, I, I joined Hangout, um, some people from Germany actually uh, ah. it was one of the very first hangouts and, and they spoke you know English and we were having a conversation and I didn't have a camera I didn't have a mic and like you need to go get a camera and a mic so I got one the next day and jumped back in and and I haven't looked back since I, I, I started to kind of think about I, I do a lot of workshops in my studio here in Milwaukee we do lighting and and, and Photoshop and and theme shoots and I was thinking, wow, it, it'd be really cool to be able to do some of the Photoshop work live with other people. Like I used to use GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar for that kind of thing, and uh, it was fine. But, but you, know, you have to advertise it, you have to market it, you have to get people out there, and then maybe they show up, maybe they don't show up. The nice thing about Google Plus is this is all kind of there. I, I throw the Hangout open and open it public and say, I'm just going to retouch a photo if you want to come in and watch and make fun of me or whatever, you know, watch me goof up, come on uh, in, you know, uh, and, and people would come in, and, you know, I, I was all for, you know, re, you know, critique the photos I'm working on, what do you like, what do you don't like, what do you think of this, what do you think of that, and you get some really nice comments from people, and, and I think that helps, you know, shape the image, I mean, I've got an idea where I want to go with it, but it's not locked down, you know, I'm all, all for, you know, can you make it better, and, uh, that was one of the nice things about it is you get that criticism live. So I've been a big fan of doing the Hangouts. And so I'll do Photoshop retouching workshop, you know, here on uh, Google+. Plus. I'll just say I'm going to retouch a photo, and I'll just open up Hangouts and toss it out to the public. And sometimes I get nobody. You know, sometimes it'll just be me. I'll retouch the photo for an hour, hour and a half, and then I'll close it down, and nobody came in. And then I'll get mm -hmm. random folks who come in and just kind of stare at the screen and 
week. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a funny place Google Plus, especially if you go public, because if you go public, you know, there's more people that are not in America and Canada than there are that than there are that are. So there's like you never know who you're gonna get, and it's interesting. Uh, but art is universal, so if you do have pictures of art up and people see it, they can still appreciate it, and that's why. But I feel like. Google Plus, really, photographers have basically, that was the big thing when we first started, when the stream first started, you would see photographers really take over Google Plus and really just picture after picture after picture would be your stream. If you didn't see cats, dogs, and animated GIFs, you saw professional uh, photography or, you know, different, different levels, different kinds of photography. So what was that like? Was that a new experience to be on a website, a social network, and have so much photography and so many photography circles and, you know, it just everyone. There's so many photographers. I, I get a new new people every day. It was certainly a pleasant surprise, and I, it, some some parts that I miss. Like I'm not a fan of the any, animated gifts for the most part. So right, right, right. <laughs> well, sometimes they're artistically done. Doug, oh, yeah, sometimes done. they're great, but you know, the vast majority of them are you know the cat jumping against the wall. And I, okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, but this guy Duncan K. Blitz, I believe he's he's pretty good. He has like a lot of zombie ones. And, like Boy, that. there's some there's some really good stuff out there, uh, but it's the you know kid in the skateboard and the random cat ones, you know those. Yeah. But you know they're entertaining for a moment. It's just when they're flooding your stream, they get to be overbearing. And so, like I read your yeah, I don't have a full dossier. I'm not the FBI or Google. I have just a little bit here, but like five fifty pages, uh, or less. Uh, when, so like what it said yourself taught taught taught. I can't talk uh, New York. Says yourself taught at photography, but you went to school for theoretical physics. That's interesting. So how do you go from mm -hmm. theoretical physics to photography? Did you have a dream to be like an astron astronomer or an astronaut or something else? Yeah, actually, uh, astrophysics was the original plan, and uh, still love it. Still follow a, a tremendous number of science circles on Google Plus, which there are a lot of. Um, you know, especially with you know, you've got a very active astronaut sending back pictures constantly, which is awesome. Uh, who's a big Google Plus fan. That, that whole stream is cool. I, it, I started out doing uh, architectural illustration uh, for the Kuwait Ministry of Defense, actually. And I was working as a physicist on some work for a government project. And I started doing more architectural illustration because I could draw. And then I soon moved into uh, much more of the architectural field. And that you know, kind of you needed the photography because you're going to take pictures of a building and you're going to, you know, use some 3D rendering and, and render in something. And it kind of just evolved to that uh, to the point where I was shooting a lot of architecture and modifying it in 3D applications. And it was interesting and it was fun. And I never really kind of considered portraiture as, an, as another opportunity until about 2009 or 2008. Uh, when I really kind of just took off with that. I mean, it was just kind of a, it hit me, and then I fell in love with it instantly, and I never even considered it before that point. So, kind of fun. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So, what, I mean, how, so how did you feel, like, I mean, you have so much knowledge in your brain, right? There's so much up there. What, I mean, what, so does it affect, like, all the physics and stuff? Does that affect, like, photog your photography, like, angles and, like, measurement? Are you into, like, numbers with your photography? Because physics is very heavy mathematical and is that a, do you connect it to when you're taking pictures or your brain or how yeah I mean like like a lot of people look at you know they don't know about depth of field and they don't really think about say front focus and back focus and there's a difference depending on the millimeter of the lens that you're using whether you're using a wide angle or a telephoto lens right. and then you've got circle of confusion app there's a thing called the circle of confusion which is the piece of math that is used to configure or to to explain the the bouquet or the, the the light modification you're going to get on the sensor based on the depth of field. So it's this funny all you this mentioned fun circle of confusion because I I was going I should add you to my circle of confusion. I have that. I have one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's actually a very technical term that's used when when the chips are created by the manufacturers. It's what they call the circle of confusion, which is the perceived sharp focus, which isn't really sharp focus at all. It's just the point at which the the confusion is not enough for you to say that's blurry. Right. And depending on, again, all these factors, that weighs in. And I just think a lot of that's really interesting. And, and of course, light. You know, light, you've got your inverse square law, and you, you use that. You know, when I light my photos, the distance of the light to the model, the, the size of the apparent source, the distance of that to the model, it's fall off all the other things that I consider. Uh, so I like I actually like to play with a lot of that and 
and uh, experimentation is king. I mean, just you know, knowing the math is one thing, and you know, it's it's learnable. And you don't really need to know it. Uh, I find it interesting, but it's just playing with it. You know, you you'll figure out this is how light works. Whether or not you understand it mathematically is you know it looks good though. I mean, you figure it yeah. out. You also figure it out just playing around. I remember you know I made a film and you're trying to figure out where to put the light, and eventually shining the, all the light upwards upwards gave us the best the best uh, picture versus. You know, because if you shine it at the actors, it creates a lot of shadows. And so, mm-hmm. you know, just learning playing with that and messing around and then stylizing gels and things like that. But, um, yeah, so do you use, do you wind up using a lot of gels in your photography at all, or do you? Yeah, um, do I do. Uh, I usually, very, they're very subtle. Um, I'm not big into the, uh, you know, trying to make it look like a, a, a 70s video. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, too many, too many reds, too many blues. But usually there's a little bit of something to add warmth or a, a coolness to the image, or actually messing with the camera's white balance is much more common. You know, put, putting the camera into tungsten white uh, white balance, for instance, shifts everything very blue, and then you gel your main subject. So you get a huge blue shift over the majority of the scene, except for your subject, which will be properly white balanced because you you used a, a CTO or color temperature orange filter or gel on the on the subject. So you can have a lot of fun with a combination of the two. Awesome. I'm just in my YouTube uh, thing looking at some comments, and there's a guy that's trolling our YouTube named Robert Richard. That's always nice. Uh, he just got more fame than he should have. Uh, that's pretty weird. Uh, wow. Uh, that's YouTube for you. <laughs> but the, I, they're going to integrate YouTube in Google Plus comments, so that should be interesting, uh, and seeing if that will make it better instead of such, such nuttiness over there. But Lynette Young is watching, and she's pretty cool. I don't know if you know Lynette. Lynette actually... So it has the purple hair, and I know that you, the, the first picture, you had the purple hair going. So are you, you're into, hair seems to be a big part of your photography. You really like hair, you like colors. Which what? is funny, right? Yeah, is, that, is, there, is it <laughs> a Oedipus? It's an Oedipus. <laughs> it's like a Freud. You know, yes. like, I need some hair. I, I just, I love the movement. And it doesn't necessarily need to be hair. It can be flowing gown. It can be trees. It can be something. But it's got to have movement. And, and uh, uh, you can, I mean, you can give tension to an image with diagonals and triangles and things. But really, that when you get, just to add a little bit of that wing to the hair or to the flip to the dress, it just adds so much more interest to the image. Not to say that it can be interesting without that, but I love it. So, yes, I'm, my wife tells me I need to find something else to be fixated on for a while because she's getting bored with the hair. Well, I mean, but she, but it, she, and your wife is totally cool. You have so many different models, and, and I mean, they're mostly females, right? Most of your work? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, 99%. I have just a couple male models I worked with in the past. Basically, I, I want somebody who's interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it, even just like a, a pretty woman who's just a pretty woman who says, well, you know, will you take my boudoir pictures or something like that? You know, truthfully, just not interesting. It's, it's yeah. yeah, it's pretty woman and everything, but um, once, you, once you're kind of past that, you want, I want something artistically interesting. So I'd rather shoot somebody who's interesting than I would shoot someone who's beautiful. And, yeah, they, most of them tend to be female, but I think that's just because most of the models that I know or most of the people in this area that are models are female. So it's right. um, just yeah. working out. And I know they always say, you know, that your eyes are the windows to the soul. So that's like the big, that's a, that's a big thing, I guess. I mean, how people look at you and, and pose and what's sincere and what's faked, you know, trying to get that sincerity right. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, finding a, uh, finding a pretty model is, is not hard. I mean, you find them all the time. But finding an expressive model is difficult, and the the models that can express themselves, show emotion, uh, know how to pose themselves is, I mean, that's helpful, but an expressive model poses themselves naturally, so it's to find that muse, that perfect model who's fun to shoot, interesting, and expressive is, wow, and I, there's been a few of them that I've met over time, you know, and not too many live in this area, there's a couple, but uh, from all around the country, I've met people from California, Maryland. So do you travel to do shoots then, or? Or do you fly no, actually, in? they they fly in here, and we we do big group events. So we'll do a whole weekend of shooting uh, different concepts. We'll get a bunch of cars, we'll get motorcycles, we'll get a haunted house. We'll just take the place over and invite a bunch of photographers and models and makeup artists and hairstylists and wardrobe people and just shoot. And sometimes I'll, I'll pre-plan some of the ideas, and uh, th- those are really fun, especially if they turn out the way you want them to turn out. Uh, but oftentimes it's just thinking on your feet. There's a model, she's wearing this outfit, you've got this car, I've got an idea, and then you, you light it, you shoot it, and then, you know, you hope it works out. 
Yeah, it's interesting how that works, right? You know, like uh, you plan something and then you get to set, you get to the location and you get more ideas and then there are factors and there's weather and there's clothing and it, sometimes it works out perfectly, sometimes it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with a photo shoot, you have so many, I mean, how many photos would you say you normally take on a shoot? Is it, how many, how many rolls of film? Or? Well, I'm actually not uh, a huge uh, shutter bug. And, you know, of a specific concept, I may take 8 to 20 photos. Um, not a huge number. I'm very specific about my posing, so it actually takes me a long time to get the model, what I'm looking for. I'll take a picture. Um, obviously, I do my light tests, and I really don't count those because I'm never going to use them. Uh, once, the, once the light's perfect, then I'm posing the model, taking a picture, adjusting the model, taking a picture, and then exploring the pose. Okay, what are the other options? And what are the other angles? And, and kind of working that. I didn't used to do that, and, and that was a very, you know, it was a big mistake. It was a learning curve there. You know, just because you've got the model in a gray sweep doesn't mean you can't shoot the model from the back or from the side. You've got to rotate the model. And a lot of people don't think that. They go, well, I can't shoot her from the back because she's on a sweep, and how do you walk around her? Well, you don't. You spin her. Oh, right. yeah. It makes perfect sense, but you don't really... It doesn't occur to you as an amateur, you know, newer photographer in this, so it, it took me a while. It's kind of like when you're shooting a model on a white on a white background and you're using the rule of thirds to kind of get the composition right. It's silly because at the end of the day, the entire white space that's two-thirds or a third of the... Wait, did you say white space? What? White space? Well, exactly. If you're shooting on a white sweep, you can make as much white space as you want later on. Don't cut her face in half because you want, like, the half head thing. Just yeah. crop it later. And that's another one of those, duh. I was thinking a Google thing. Plus dig there with the white space. Ah, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> My cat likes to sit right in the white space. Sit in the white Well, at least, yeah, at least that's, there's a use. Mm -hmm. Get a use out of it. So, I mean, yeah, it's amazing with this new design, um, all the different... I think I almost feel like they plan they plan the white space so people can bitch and they can have content and memes and they can sit back and laugh and say, "See, look, we knew the white space would create so much content and controversy, and then we're just going to put stuff there, and no one's going to even remember there was white space there." It'll be gone in a month, and then oh, there'll be very few also remember it in ten years. Remember when they had the white space? Right. Remember when Google Plus was a different was diaspora? What? <laughs> Whatever. Remember eight inch floppies? You know, <laughs> oh yeah, remember that? Remember when our parents had to walk through snow and stuff? You know, as I as a parent, did you do you like did you want to say when I was your age I had to walk through snow and um, well, you did? I have said it. I have yeah. a fourteen year old and a ten year old, and I just totally kept myself. Oh, my dad. Oh no. <laughs> you know, like I never thought I would say that, but I did. Like, are there any like you are? So you told me you do have a wife. You have two kids. What? What do they think of the photography, and uh, do they ever help you out, or do they come to a location, or? No, it, it's it's pretty much just my thing. You know, they they're really not interested. I, my wife did model for me once. Uh, she's not a model and, and doesn't want to be a model. Uh, but the kids were out of town for the weekend. She's like, let's go to the studio and let's shoot. So I was like, all right. So I got a hairstylist. I got a makeup artist. You know, I. She said it was very similar to like going to a spa, you know, where you, you feel like you're getting the treatment. You know, they, she sat down, they did her makeup, they did her hair, and wardrobe people there, and then we shot. And she was like, "Wow, that was a really cool experience." And, and the pictures turned out awesome, so she was very pleased at the end of the day. I have a couple I can show it to if you want to see them. Yeah, we'd love to check it out your since we're talking about her pictures of your wife, I should say, because the other is just saying checking out your wife sounds wrong. Yeah, <laughs> pictures of pictures of photos of her. No, uh, my no, my wife. Uh, my wife is, is uh, in, I never tell her age. Is that your wife? That is my wife. Oh, my God. I didn't, I really like that photo. <laughs> now, now I feel wrong, too. <laughs> so, I mean, what, wow. It was, I mean, I mean, obviously your wife doesn't normally wear her hair and makeup and all that like that. So, was it, I mean, you've seen her like that before or that was kind of, uh, did it wow you a little bit to see your wife like that? No, I don't know what she looks like. <laughs> no, actually, she doesn't wear makeup uh, normally. So to have a makeup person there was was she she thought that was a real treat. I mean, she knows how to do her makeup. She just doesn't do it. Right. Um, and, and the fact that you you said you have two kids is pretty well. I guess they're older, so she had some time. But yeah, well, good. she runs every morning, and you know, she takes care of herself. And yeah. and we had we had fun with it. It was a it was a fun shoot. We did uh, we did a couple different images. We did this one. We did no, it's the same day. So we we shot all these in the same day. Oh, that's cool. Um, is that, watch, is, uh, is that Watchmen inspired, or? Uh, you know, I think so. Though. That's a, that's a good point. No, it was. Uh, this was one of those 
ideas that didn't turn out the way that I'd planned it. Um, the the ball you see in front there is, is one of these little sparkle glitter filled liquid filled balls that you can buy at, at different toy stores. And my my ten year old was fixated on them. She's got two of them. And after a while, they start to collapse. And I was afraid the thing was going to leak all over the place. So I punctured it, drained the stuff out of it, and let it dry out. And then I, I got a bunch of keychains, uh, little LED keychains off the internet, jammed them all into that thing, and then just uh, stuck it on a, on a stand off to the side there. And uh, there you go. And so, yeah, wow. So what the, and the make, is that all, is any of that photoshopped or that's all make? Uh, that's makeup? all photoshopped. Okay. Yeah. All the makeup? Okay. Yeah, the the uh, the eyes obviously, and and the it's funny is that there are not too many layers in this in this document at all. The hue and saturation slider um, was applied just in a saturation or a um, hue adjustment layer, and I do is slide it all the way over, and it did that to her skin. So it's there's no effort involved at all. That this robe is actually silver. Uh, yeah, so they're telling me they're telling me on YouTube that the photos are cropped at the top and the bottom. Is that just when you moved in? I don't know. I, I don't have the YouTube playing. Um, Let me just hmm. check it out real quick. Just make sure. Stick to trying making this a square. Let's see if that helps. No. Let me find it here. Yeah, so on the YouTube, you need to, uh, it's like the top, you need to like slide it down because it's not capturing the top half of the face. Let's do this it's a little differently. Then. Okay. Let's do interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. I learn something new every day here on Hale Conversations on air live. And thanks everyone for watching. Le uh, Le Pierre, Le Pierre Photo seems to know you. They were very excited to watch. Thanks for tuning in. Karen Sharkey is here. Joshua Seven, Summer McClive. This is Hale Conversations. Every week, a weekly show I do. But a guest, Scott Detweiler, photographer, conceptual portrait photographer, also a software developer. We can get into that yet. Okay, let me go check on YouTube to see what it's like. Yeah, you can see the whole thing like that, like that. Okay. Yeah, that, that that seems to be much better. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. So, but yeah, if you need to zoom in, I would say if you need to zoom in, just just take the whole photo and drag it t towards the bottom of the screen because it seems to be going for the top half. So, so you took those pictures, and how long would you say it takes you to Photoshop something like that? It depends on the image. Uh, this one was probably 15 minutes. Uh, m most of it was uh, the modification of the ball to make it look like a little sun uh, to add the bouquet around. Um, make it more interesting. Just add that interest to the uh, to the ball than anything else. The eyes were pretty fast, and then again, the skin and the robe were everything were, were modified very quickly uh, using the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Just just slid it over, and it was just done. Good enough. You would never do that to skin, but you know, to make it look to make it look like an alien, that was simple. And it's then kinda, throw throw a background texture, and it was done. It's kind of cool because I did have Paul Rosette as a body painter, and I've seen a lot of his work. And it, it is reminiscent of, even though she's not body painted, there is a body, there is a feel like she could have been body painted, right? Maybe yeah. on some of them. Yeah, it does have a bit of a splotchiness to it. And I think that's because the tolerance slider uh, for the hue and saturation adjustment layer was modified. So it didn't do, you know, even coverage. I wanted it to look a little more organic. Yeah, which is cool. Which is a cool thing about it. I can't believe that's minimal layers said what a, their, na their name is What a Croc, but they're just <laughs> the YouTube. We gotta love the YouTube names. Uh, hey, what's up, What a Croc uh, with a zero? Uh, so yeah, he could, he's yeah, it's really great work. And I noticed right away uh, there's just so much to look at in the photo, and you know, just appreciating the photo for what it is, but also the idea that it's a photo, the photo itself, and then it's been chopped, and the effects that you do, and you know, you like to use props, you like to accentuate the hair, and. Uh, Cool. So if you want to go through them, we can go through them and, and talk about them. We can also talk about life as well as as we go through it. Uh, what are some? That's really cool. So what are some other photographers that inspired you along the way um, that really you were just really into, and and or or uh, other artists that inspired you? 
Uh, well, there's a, there's a guy here in Chicago uh, named uh, Michael Rosen, who uh, is a friend of mine, and we've gotten to shoot a couple different times, and uh, he was a good inspiration uh, for me because of, of kind of the artistic flair that his stuff has. He's not on Google+. Plus. What? Um, but, uh, yeah, he's not. But uh, he's... Uh, he, he, was a, he was a great inspiration, gave me a lot of great ideas. And then there's a lot of people on, on DeviantArt that I had known. I've been a DeviantArt member for almost a decade, and, and although I don't really use it too much anymore, but there are quite a few people in there who are just dripping with talent, and you get motivated by some amazing image that you would see, and, and that's, that was really kind of the, the impetus for some of these things. It's like, wow, you, know, you can do so much uh, given the time. This is this is one I did for Halloween. I, I did a self-portrait uh, for a se selfie Sunday uh, run by uh, by Levi. So I, I try to come up with something interesting. That is pretty funny. So what? So the last one that we saw before the the leopard spots. What? Mm -hmm. So basically, tell us a little bit about. Was she just completely naked, and then you did the Photoshop? Or? No, no. She actually had this in her car, and I didn't even ask her why you have a leopard suit in your car. But she goes, I have a leopard suit in my car. And Okay. Why oh, wow. So, that? so that's actually a real leopard suit. Yeah, it's actually a real leopard suit, and I have no idea why she had one in her car. Right? <laughs> well, I have a few reasons. <laughs> and I like this picture for a, for a lot of reasons. It, 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 it breaks a lot of rules. You know, the fact her arm is covering her mouth. You know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, that was a mistake. It should have moved. And I'm like, no, I really like... No, it's I can, think it's suggestive. Yeah, and you you know exactly, and you can tell that she's smiling. I mean, you get to look at her eyes and know instantaneously she's she's smiling. And you can see the dimples too. Come yeah, on. and I just really like the expression on the face, the hair. You There's a lot of nice diagonal there. What I like about it is the fact that you knowing your work is photoshopped. I looked at it and thought, oh, he photoshopped the the leopard. And you're telling <laughs> us, yeah, like especially like I mean, not we all like butts, but obviously her butt stands out in this picture. Mm -hmm. literally. So that's the first thing. It's kind of, and in fact, if your eyes hit the butt first before you see that, that it's a person, you almost don't even think it's a person at first. Does that make sense? If you see the butt first and then sure. you, your eyes come out, so it was interesting. And then I was like, and it could even look like an actual. It actually, if you look at her butt and her leg, it looks like that could be like an elephant, doesn't it? If the one shape <laughs> and, the, and the, the like the trunk and the. I won't tell her you said that. No, whatever. <laughs> like, I meant an elephant's trunk. Yeah, don't tell her. Yeah. She's beautiful. Oh. I, I actually, when I when I make my images, one of the things I try and do is 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 you know, flip the image horizontally, which is a, an old graphic arts trick to kind of refresh the eye. You know, if you're working on an image for a while, you need to flip it so that your eye sees things you wouldn't have seen the other way. But I look at, I kind of study how my eye looks at a picture. If I glance away and then look at it, where where do I go first? And it always goes to the area of highest contrast, of sharpness, you know, things like this. You learn in in uh, probably learn in school I to say, but I didn't learn it, so I'm just learning it, you know, through reading and school of hard knocks. But I try and look at each image and just, you know, decide how is the eye going to work its way through the picture? What's it going to see? And yeah, and you're right. You could go to the face or you could go to the butt, and either one uh, works. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna explore the image. I'm not a fan of vignettes. You won't see very many of my images with a heavy vignette, maybe a light one, but. No, vignette is a trick to get the eye to focus in the middle of the picture, and you should be able to do that using other methods, you know, either focus or contrast or, or something on that line. So I, I try and say, if I'm using a vignette, did I make a mistake? Do I need to go back and revisit part of the image, add more depth, more contrast or interest, so the eye doesn't need to, you know, wander around the edge of the picture looking for something to look at? So mm -hmm. that's just kind of a common, uh, that's one of my little quirks. I'm not a big vignette fan. Uh, here's one, for instance, that has a vignette, uh, but it's not your typical vignette vignette. It's added later. And uh, this is uh, this is many hours of Photoshop. The wings are actually painted uh, into the image using uh, Corel Painter, uh, which is another graphic application. You can probably do it in Photoshop, but you don't get the blending capabilities that you do in Painter. And so, with, so you're a photographer, but the idea of you being this kind of graphic artist, in a sense, is that something that was that was a hard? I mean, did you have a natural skill as far as that goes, as far as being artistic, as far as drawing goes? Was there? Is would you say that graphic design involves a sense of all that, or? Yeah, I, I would. I, I I've been, as I say, I was an architectural illustrator for a while, and and I like drawing quite a bit in painting. 
and sketching and all those things. I wasn't good at it. You know, when I first started doing figure drawing, my people looked like aliens. They were deformed. <laughs> you know, and that's the toughest thing to draw because everybody knows what a human is supposed to look like. So to look at a picture that's even slightly wrong, everyone's like, well, that doesn't look like that person or that body's messed up. Mm. So it's very difficult to draw people, which is why I drew them. Um, it was very challenging. And, and I don't think my people ever did look good. You know, I, I still, as I said, we do that, that Tuesday night digital painting. We do a lot of, like you're supposed to do a comic book cover for this next week. Awesome. Um, and, you know, mine's, I'm going to use a photo as, a, as my point of departure. And I, and I said that. I'm not going to cheat. You know, I'm going to use the photo. I'm going to paint over the photo. But I'm not going to paint over the photo to make it look like a painting. I'm going to make it look like a photo with paint added to it because that's a completely different kind of thing to me. Um, but in this case, I just had to paint some wings, and you know, who knows what demon wings look like? So right. it's very Imagine. easy to draw them in, and I have somebody go, "Well, that's not the spines on those demon wings." <laughs> so you do whatever you want to do. So it was Everyone's pretty easy to do. Yeah, and I'm a big, uh, cool. I mean, big Lovecraft, uh, H.P. Lovecraft fan. So in the back, I tried to use some some of that symbology. Um, I like the whole occult feeling. It's a lot of my stuff is darker, and I don't. You know, I not say I haven't shot as much of it as I want to, but you'll see, I, I'll come around Halloween, I'm a madman. There's so much I want to do and so much I want to shoot. I just love I think, the darker. I think I really like your stuff because as a filmmaker, actor, and I'm cinematic, and your stuff is really cinematic, theatrical in that sense. And you're, I mean, this reminds me of, it could remind me of Game of Thrones, it could remind me of Constantine, it reminds me of so many different elements. You have the dragon tattoo, so look at that, it's like bondage. Yeah, this is a shibari, uh, Japanese rope bondage. Uh, this is a, what they call a turtleback. Uh, now, how do you decide to do something like this? Like, what, what inspired you to do a bondage? Well, and you know, I have no idea what inspired me, but this image was actually one I had sketched out. I knew exactly the pose I wanted. I knew exactly the rope pattern I wanted, how I wanted to light it. I knew everything about this image. I just had to find a model with long enough hair to make it a PG-13 image. You know, I had to go over the breasts long enough. Because she's naked, you know, you can't put a bra on that and make it look weird, you know, it, it, it wouldn't look right. So I had to find a, a, a model with red hair that was long enough and was willing to do this, and luckily I know one, so that was really cool. So we took only about eight pictures, eight or nine pictures, and I look back and I regret that now, I wish I would have taken time to explore this, but this was shot in, say, 2009, so I'd only been doing photography for about a year, year and a half at that point, so I didn't know you know, some of those things that you learn about exploring the pose, and, and I didn't get it. And you know, no one taught me you know, what you should or shouldn't do. I just kind of say, that sucks. Let's try something different. <laughs> but I shot, like, every other weekend. I mean, I, and I'd shoot the entire day with, like, 10 or 15 different models using uh, what luckily was a studio full of lights. So I had all this cool equipment that I could play with, and I learned so much. I probably learned six months worth of this stuff every time I shot. I mean, you just... You know, everything from don't do that because the light will fall on the model to, you know, <laughs> you know, light this this way. You know, th this is not in a black backdrop, for instance. This is shot in the middle of a floor. And there's a huge warehouse behind her with other photographers shooting with other models. Uh, so this was shot like, um, I want to say it's up F16. It was, uh, had to be bright enough to, to obviously obfuscate everything in the background and leave her, you know, the only exposed object. And so you said and, you said yeah. other photographers are shooting in this warehouse at the same time you were. Yes. What? So what? It was just some. What? Was it some kind of meet another up group or? shoot? Yep. Another another one of these group shoots where you just get together, have a bunch of photographers, a bunch of models, hair and makeup, and everybody. The goal is to everybody you know, walk out with a whole portfolio full of stuff at the end of the day. Now, if a model can shoot with eight or ten photographers who've got different styles, you know they can they can get a, a great, you know, bunch of work for their portfolio without, you know, having to wander around and go to all these different events and so on. So the photographer, go ahead. So if, uh, if this model, like this bondage that she's in, is that, is, was she in that bondage thing for all the photographers or? No, just it, for me. This was my concept. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of greedy that way. If I, if I take the time to come up with an idea and I take the time to light it, I'm the only one who wants that picture. Because if somebody else has the exact same picture, why would I even bother? No, I agree. That's why I was wondering. Yeah. You said a bunch of models were in the warehouse. Do they just they just change out of clothes and stuff like that? As people yeah, they're doing to, other stuff. They're on other backgrounds. They're on chairs. Cool. They're in front of brick walls. And yeah, so a whole room full of people. This this image. Uh, so I, I should plug my book. I have a book that just came out on the sure. 17th. And uh, what I did is I took a lot of my my favorite images and I reverse engineered them. So I showed the lighting diagrams, the exit information. 
the Photoshop layer diagram, how I pose the model, how I, why I lit it the way that I lit it, and then kind of walk through the whole post-production process step by step. This is one of the images in the book. Um, because I really like this image. And that when I took it, the hair was not balanced. I didn't have enough hair on this side, so I had to borrow hair from another shot. Uh, I added some, some interest in the ground here. You know, probably didn't need be, need be added, uh, but to me, I wanted it to tell the whole story. So I needed some sort of foreground interest in here. And, uh, you know, some correction to the skin, the light, the, the rope is cutting into her in some areas, um, so I had to fix that. How, it was, so it was really tight? Did she, did she sort of hurt herself doing this, or...? No, she's actually used to it. So, <laughs> whoa, you professional. Nice. What? Yeah, actually, it's her rope, and and come to find out, yeah, she's she she likes this whole shibari thing from a model perspective. I don't know about her personal nice, life. Oh, okay, I thought you meant yeah. nice. Well, I've, I am I'm assuming so. I don't know, but her husband's a totally cool guy, and he was there, and he was actually helping me tie the rope because that's you get a little personal when you're tying these things, and I don't want to touch the models that way. So I say, you tie the rope. This is what I want. This is how you do it. Right. So it worked out real well. Do you want to be, yeah, you don't even want her to really, even, so when you shoot, do you want them to not even know you're there, or do you ever have to engage them so to get more what you want? Is it Does it work both ways, or uh, the model? I'm, I'm fine engaging the model, you know, I, I'm, I'm fine talking to them and, and you know, uh, doing some slight adjustments and stuff like that, but I'm not one to, you know, um, I'll, I'll, like, move hair and things like that, but you always ask the model first, you just avoid that whole complexity there. And, and you know, <laughs> it's an interesting subject because there's guys with cameras and then there's photographers who, you know, I'm married, I'm happily married, and you just learn after a while, you know, it, you just shut that part of your brain off. You're there to create art. You're not there to get a date. And right. once you learn how to do that, uh, it becomes, you're not as timid in front of the model. For instance, I am not at all, I'm, I'm introverted, and I'm not at all introverted in front of the models, you know, because I'm not looking for a date anymore or a mate. I, I'm just there to shoot art. And right, but, you know, you're, not, you're still a human being, so occasionally well, that turns you on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But, you you know, you just, as I say, you learn to kind of ignore that side of your brain, and you're there to make the art. It's not to say that every so often you catch somebody who's just like, wow, you know, this still happens, but, you know, it's it's not the majority of the time. But I would say so because as a director, it's almost like, do you do you do more posing or do you do more like, all right, this is your environment. I want you to just do natural things, and I'll take pictures of you. Is it both? Yeah. It's actually a combination of both, and it's interesting that you brought that up because that's one of the things I teach in in one of my posing workshops. Is I'm like, you need to become as, as corny as it sounds. You almost need to become the method actor. You need to become the character. You know, if you're this person, what do you see? What are you experiencing? How would you pose? Now, that isn't the case for all of these. Like, for the last shot, the Shabari shot, yes, it's very much putting that character into, into position. This one, it's mm -hmm. not. She's just sitting on the floor, and I have a fan behind her, and I'm just saying, move your head back and forth. Let's get some of your hair into the air. Uh, this is another one of the images that's in the book that I reverse engineered to kind of show how I did. This, this is a very simple image. It's probably only four or five layers. It took me 15 minutes to do. It was very simple. And so how much of that hair is actually hers? 100% of it is hers. Okay. How much of it is from this shot? Uh, yeah, that's, that's probably I mean. that's, that is that's probably three shots worth of hair. Three that's shots. not the biggest one. Yeah, there there are many. There are some of these that are much. Uh, and this is the cover of your book. This this, that's, this, this is the cover of my book. Yes. So what is the name of your book? Like this. Do you have a uh, conceptual uh, conceptual portraiture? Okay. Volume one. <laughs> volume one, because volume twenty will be out. No. Yes, we that's hope cool. that if it sells well, then I'll write another one. If it doesn't, well, I'll, you know, just do part, just call it part two. What yeah. this picture reminds, but what the first thing that I think of is Madonna when I see this picture. Is that mm, interesting? interesting or yeah, just I don't that, that Madonna's idea. interesting. I like yeah. Lady Gaga for the same reason. I, you know, I don't necessarily you know, okay. know if I like the music or not, but I certainly love the originality in the the looks and the creativity, the weird looks. I love Bjork. <laughs> oh, Bjork's awesome. Yeah, same thing, same thing. Yes, yeah, so those types of our artists are really muses for me. It's amazing though that those those three are singers and that they decided to do all this this other element to their their work. Yeah. I see that? Well, that's cool. It's into, is it tar a tarot reading? Yeah, this is uh this is a a, comp a composite of probably six different pictures. So the model with the card, the candle, the flame. We can't have any fire in this specific studio. So there's a speed light pointing that's up here that snooted this pointing that's just blowing right down on top of this candle. Uh, to illuminate, because I know I need to add the flame later, but I have to make it look like it's really illuminated. And you like to use wind, it seems like you use 
fans and wind in your shots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a big heavy duty blower from Home Depot, and I just throw it up there and you know try not to abuse it in the winter time, but that happens. You know, miles away. Oh, it's cold. When yeah, you're, you shoot out of Wisconsin. You shoot out of Chicago, or no, I'm Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. What and the birds are photoshopped or real? Uh, Photoshop. It's just Photoshop. a bunch of birds layered in there, and then we took cards after we were done and t- took turns throwing them into the camera. Uh, and then I just throw because the camera was on a laying on a pillow actually, so it wasn't moving anywhere. And I was using every I was using a remote trigger, uh, so I could not have to worry about lining the cards up with the curtains or whatever. So it was very simple to. I mean, this this composition didn't take me you know 20 minutes to throw together. It feel like I said, it feels like a movie. Like what you're talking about, things like throwing the cards into the camera. I know it's a still camera, but those are things that I've done making a movie. And wow, look at that. See, okay, so picture like this. It's awesome. It's artistic. But there is a sense of, definitely a sense of sexuality, and, and, and mm-hmm. this one, I think, more than your other ones, is seems to be more sexual, but yeah. you know, that wasn't your intention. No, and, and it, it was obviously to show off the model, a beautiful model, and uh, some interest, interesting problems we had posing her, and then I had the body painter create this kind of on the fly. She's like, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know, how about some snowflakes, and then... We were shooting it for a bit, and the lips didn't look right. I'm like, you know, you need to make your lips blue. It needs to just get rid of some of the color palette that's extra. Uh, this is another one of the images in the book. I talk about how I created the background, which is actually from her body. Uh, so the background is made from extracting this pattern, and making a custom brush, putting it all over the background, and then, and then simulating a the depth of field. Because the depth of field in this image is not strong originally, but now it has a very strong depth of field. And the towel seems like, is it a towel? It seems like it, it It's a scarf a that scarf. matches the buttons in the hat, yeah. Wow, if that's a, is that like a regular, if that's a regular scarf, this girl must be crazy skinny. Uh, she's, she's a mother of two and oh not crazy God. skinny at all. You know, uh, good good form, you know, uh, well yeah. proportioned. Uh, oh, hello. Little, that's nice. Yeah, darker, a little darker. Uh, now, what, what I love about this shot is I, I caught this speed light. There's another speed light off the side here, and I totally caught this off the blade. So this is out of the camera. And I was just yes. I mean, what and I love about? Freddie. I mean, Freddie yeah. Krueger is awesome. So, what? Talk about the fa- the makeup. Is it Photoshop? Then his his mouth? No, no. This is a her. Makeup. Um, a her. Okay. Yep. She uh, she brought this prosthetic with her to the shoot with the hat and the glove. I don't know where she got this stuff, but she brought it. Mm-hmm. And one of the makeup artists helped her get it on her face. She came over and we shot it, and it promptly fell off. So. Uh, I I think I'm probably one of the only people who got a good picture of it. But and, and this picture was. I mean, it's. I love it. You know, the background is interesting. The, the the glint off the blade. You know, you couldn't have faked that. You know, it's just awesome. Uh, lucky that it worked out. Can you? Did you take a picture without the hat on or no? No. no. Okay. Again, this is one of those one of these group shoots. Uh, right. This was a very. You only have a couple minutes to really work with the model because there's a lot of other people there. It's like speed dating, but for for, for to speed photography. Yep. So you get to set up your lights, you pose them, you take a couple pictures, and you move on. Uh, here's a. Um, I'm trying to work yeah, my way is, through these a little faster. That is freaking amazing. That's fine. Take your time. It's, people are watching. They're liking it. Karen's have fantastic imagery. Fiery doesn't even begin to describe that photo. She's talking about the last one a little bit back. Uh, Ten minutes ago, yes. Yeah, and Patricio. Hey, what's up, dude? He's watching. He likes to watch my show while having dinner, which is always nice to hear. <laughs> uh, wow, look, you have the trees. And she looks a little like Captain David Jones a little bit. It seems oh, like yeah, that. yeah. Anyway. This is uh, Andrea, a model who I really like working with. There's quite a few pictures of Andrea in here. Um, that's actually her artwork on her body. I, although she was wearing blue jeans, um, and so I, had to, I just painted in the rest of it, and then I just kind of guessed where the tattoo would go uh, after that. So uh, that was that was fun. It was interesting. Um, it's interesting working with the models. That uh, you know, like for instance, she she's not one to pose nude at all. It's only implied. So as a photographer. You know, you want to get her pose, but at the same point, she doesn't want to show you anything either. So, like, right. before and after the show, you turn your back. You let her get in position. You turn around. You pose Was this her. one of those at the warehouse, or was it private? Uh, this was at a group shoot, but it was at the end because she didn't want to be naked in front of everybody else. She just wanted a lot of gawkers. So she waited until everybody had left, aside from building owner and myself and, and her and the makeup artist. So it's uh, ama- You know, it's amazing to me because I, I went to Paul's. I've been naked in front of people. I've seen people be naked. And I went to Paul Rustan's uh, body paint, and he had a, the, the models walking around naked. And there's some models that are like, I don't care, I'm naked, here it is, I don't care, go off, mm-hmm. whatever. And then there's some models, like you said, like this woman, where they're like kind of more private about it. So it's interesting, because at the end of the day, 
I guess it's different for their video or their pictures to be out there versus uh, someone staring at them and drooling. You know, and like you yeah. said, the, 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 there are photographers that that are can be a little little too creepy and like in people's their faces, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you don't want to be one of those people. You you're there to make art. You're not there to pick up a date. You know, if you're gonna date right. the model, do it after the shoot. That's right. that's what I tell people. I guess it works occasionally the other way where the models into the into the photographer. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there are, there are some models to are, are there to pick up the photographers or other models. You know, that's that happens a lot. But you know, everybody's human, so you just gotta figure what your priorities are. Awesome. And what? Tell me about the arm. What's on the the makeup on on top the on her arm? Uh, this is there? actually a tattoo that she has that goes around. Um, oh, it's her real tattoo. Okay. Yep. Yep. Pretty cool. Next up, I should say. Uh, so so my if you want the link to my book that's on. Uh, my Google Plus page or on uh, my website, which is uh, sedetweiler.com. S e d e t w e i l e r dot com, and this is yep. all. And all this information is on your Google Plus profile. Me about. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. Uh, um, maybe before you talk about this picture, real quick, talk about you do you do have a software development company that you do. You said you quote unquote during the day uh, mm -hmm. that you use usability systems architecture SQL puzzles. So, so did that come before the photography? Yes. Yeah, I've been I've been a software developer for, no, oh, geez, twenty years. Um, either as a hobby or formally, I even more than that. I mean, I was when I was probably fourteen or fifteen. I actually got uh, an article in uh, Compute Magazine way back when you know the one the one you had to type your code in, you know, and <laughs> compile it and run it. Uh, but that was uh, that was a long time ago, and I enjoy it. I, I, I like the mental challenge, a lot of math. Obviously, being a physics person, I really enjoy the, the geeky part of that. But most of my day is spent doing usability, interface design, which is Photoshop, and then SQL. I, I like writing SQL server queries, so uh, another one of those little things I get into. Cool. Yeah, no, I was I was working on that surprise drop in. Uh, what so so I, I do G four, which is a rapid fire this or that type of thing, real quick, and then we'll we'll go back to your pictures. Uh, there's no wrong at or wrong answer or right answer, but uh, it's more sometimes it's Sophie's choice. Photography or software development? Which oh, photography. Photography. Yeah. Cool hair or cool clothes? Oh, that's up. That's brutal. Is it? You don't have to cheat. You don't. Yeah, have to I, 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 it's, it depends on the wind, you know. It, it's you know, <laughs> yeah. It's, I, how about both? Both. Cool hair and full clothes for the that, wind. That is correct. Uh, story art or abstract art? Uh, abstract art. Abstract. And uh, do you prefer the online art world or the offline art world? Hmm. I, I prefer I the online. I, I don't. Yeah. I live in a part of the country that isn't really heavily artistic. I mean, downtown Milwaukee, yes, but that's 45 minutes from me. Madison, an hour to the west of me, is also very artistic. But where I live is kind of a there's nothing here. And we have a couple of galleries that are very small, so everything I get has got to be online. So yeah, online, big time. Yeah, and that's where your majority of the audience is going to be for most of this stuff. No matter, even if you're a big artist, you're still going to get a majority of the. It's it's a global uh, environment, so you mm -hmm. can reach so many people. Uh, what? Uh, oh, and you also have dreammartini.com. You want to talk a little bit about that? How you started that, and why you decided to start that website, and how that came to be? Sure, I. I there's a couple of modeling sites out there, and I got really frustrated because I I'd, up, I'd done some pictures of models, I uploaded them, and I got like two comments. And comments are obviously what feed a lot of photographers, even on Google+. You know, it's the number of pluses, the number of comments, and the number of shares are really important feedback mechanisms to let me know I did the right thing. And I got like two comments. I was like, man, I love this picture, and I got nothing on it. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, I'm looking at the model's uh, portfolio, and she has like 400 comments on the same picture. I'm like, well, that's stupid. This piece of software should be written so that if one person gets a comment or she wins the photo of the day or gets an editor's award, I should get that. And the makeup artist should get that. And you know, Everybody should share in that because we all had something to do with that image. So I, And it was very difficult to credit models and credit hair and makeup. So um, one of my developers and I we were playing with some different languages and some different options. And rather than using it in a real-world idea, we're like, how about we just write this thing for giggles? We write a model networking photographer networking, hair, makeup, wardrobe, so that if you want to show a portfolio, you want to you know, have an event, you want to get some other people involved, hire other people, book other people, you could do it all on this site. And we've rewritten it a couple different times, and whenever we want to play with the new technology, we just go back 
because the database is pretty much going to stay the same and just rewrite the front end technologies each time. Awesome. Do you have a Google Plus page? I mean, you talked about pages a little bit before the show that you're not, you're still working with them. Do you have a Green Martini type page? No. Or, no. Okay, cool. Um, so you have all these different pictures. This, so this is your very first book that you've ever done, like really professional book that you were talking about? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I've been been working on articles for a long time, and and I finally just decided to put them into book form and, and see what came of it. So. Cool. Period. That's a some sort of period type piece. This was one of the very first com uh, composite pieces I did. This is in 2010. Is that right? Yeah, it must have been. Um, so Valerie, one of my very favorite models uh, from DC, has this awesome feather in her cap, and I was like, "Wow, well, why don't you?" Hold your hand out like there's a big bird in it or something like that. So I went on um, iStock and I bought this bird. And <laughs> like, yeah, I went on iStock and I bought a bird. I did, yeah. I went on iStock and paid a book for a bird. Yes. And then uh, uh, cut the sky out and dodged and burned it until it looked like it was lit in a similar way. Adjusted the tones and dropped a shadow so it you know, dropped the shadow across the bodice of her dress and her hand, your arm, and it looked real. Do you ever do a series where you take like you take the picture of her and the bird and then you just put her in a, a bunch of different backgrounds, or that's cheesy? Uh, no, I do that quite often, actually. Almost everything I shoot, all the pictures that you've seen so far today are all shot on just gray suite. Okay. So 99% of them are going to be on that same that same suite. Let's say, just as I say that, and the next one isn't. <laughs> Oh, hello. Uh, this is this is just, and this is, to, I guess, to prove the fact I can actually take a picture without photoshopping anything. Although I still this photoshop. This is to prove that Sports Illustrated can hire you for their swimsuit. Yeah, and the model was like, "Oh my God, I have abs!" I'm like, "Oh, of course you do." And she's like, "I have no idea." You know what? As beautiful as the model is, the most interesting thing is the water for, by far. Yeah, I love. Water. Like, obviously, you have to use a flash for this. So I had another model actually holding the umbrella out over over the water, and I used a Nikon uh, CLS. I'm a Nikon bigot by far. I hmm. uh, took this shot. Uh, obviously, it has to be fast enough shutter speed to, uh, and I can shoot up to eight thousandth of a second using my D three hundred, so that was no problem. And then I did actually replace the sky. I didn't think the sky was dramatic enough. It was just that blue, getting near dusk, blah, no clouds going on kind of thing, and I wanted a little bit of zing, so I just added a different sky. Cool. Um, so, what's your favorite? So, out of all, do you have favorites? Any like? Any pictures that you've showed us that were your absolute favorite, or I know you really yeah, like the, the book cover. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm. So this is what I took. This is again right out of the camera. This is for a selfie Sunday. Um, just stuck a speed light up into an umbrella. Uh, here's this one you had commented on earlier. Hey, back to the other one that you just found. It really that one really puts you in a in a like a Christopher Nolan. <laughs> it could be DiCaprio. It could be. A mobster thing. It's pretty cool. I mean, you can kind of see that the like it, it doubles for umbrella and there's a little bit of the of the photography equipment, but it's kind of a cool effect. Yeah, yeah. I was very very pleased with how it turned out. It was not the shot I meant to take, by the way, but you know it worked yeah. out. It never it's never the shot you want to take or wanted to take. Yeah, this one I really like. This is one of the first shots I saw of yours, and I just like the idea that you did how you put this the the background with the motorcycle on the model. You know, this was, uh, again, playing with a lot of angles, a lot of triangles was the goal. Um, you know, that's very purposeful. It's, it's uh, two lights, so there's a, a, a large beauty dish gridded directly above the model on the bike, and then a uh, camera left is a speed light with a blue gel on it to catch some of the, to add the blue highlights into the bike here, uh, which when I added the sitting in the background, um, just kind of worked that same palette. So the city is the white and the chrome and the blue, and it all kind of marries itself together. Well, and it's funny because at first I didn't realize the motorcycle was bigger, but the motorcycle really, it's depth of field, but it looks like the motorcycle could be bigger than the model, but it's hard to tell because she's sitting, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, she is right next to that thing. It is a very big custom bike. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the bike is bigger than her, but like seeing her on it, hello. Yeah. This is Andrea again. Uh, love, I, I just met her like maybe two months ago, and we shot and instantaneously became one of my favorite muses. I mean, just wonderful posing and storytelling capabilities. Uh, again, just lighting her in unique ways, trying to make something a little bit, you know, not your typical umbrella or softbox in the front, you know, to split light, but lit from the back. So this is uh, on the narrow side. And then I have this steampunk pistol um, sitting on my shelf here. So I took that along for the day, and although you know her outfit isn't exactly steampunk, it's close enough. It has a Blade Runner feel. It has a futuristic. Yeah, 
Uh, you know, and I commented, your, a lot of your style feels 80s films, 80s cinematic, 80s music, which is cool. Uh, I know 80s probably played a big part of your life, right? Maybe. No, it was like grew up then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like a modern twist on it. And uh, I don't know if you saw the movie Drive, which really had like an 80s feel as well. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the, the background here is the Science Fiction Center in Seattle. Uh, a snapshot I took of that with my wife's uh, little Canon Elf, and then take change obviously the color palette, throw it back there, and then this is snow. Uh, in the front, taken uh, from one of my pictures outside where I failed trying to take a picture of myself with an umbrella. So uh, even some of those textures get used again and again. Um, quite a few Andrea in here from... Uh, so from tell us how you did this one. Did she, is she sitting? Yeah, she's or? sitting on a stool okay. right here. Okay. And just on the edge of the stool, I let her kick her feet out, you know, and then there was a speed light on a stand right here, right in front of the gun to make sure that we have, uh, again, the light looks unique and interesting, and it's gelled pretty orange. Um, I say pretty orange because I don't remember what I gelled it exactly. I just grabbed some oranges and threw it on there until I liked the result. Yeah, it's and more then, of a comic book. It has a comic book feel. Yeah, and I love comic books. Actually, as, a, as, a, as an idea factory, comic books to me are huge. You know, I, there's quite a few comics, uh, or comic artists, I should say, that I follow on Google+. Plus. There's some great circles out there for those. Uh, and there's some really good, some good stuff. Going on. And the background is actually a tire. Um, I've used the same tire in quite a few different shots. It's just a tire uh, pattern repeated, and then I just motion blurred it uh, to add some action to it. And this is, again, snow. I was really playing with the snow because I had it hanging around, and it was on my mind. So these, yeah, are, I mean, these are all just... I can imagine these being... I know you, how you feel about it, I mean, it gifts, but I can imagine some of them being pretty awesome. <laughs> you had, like, two or three shots. Oh, yeah, that's true. Now, this is on white paper again, a seamless paper, and then this is again the Science Fiction Center in Seattle. Uh, but this is the side of it, uh, and then I forget what's in the background here. I, it could have been just a shot. How do you of a decide how far thing. how far to be from the model? Like how close or how far? Like is that something that you you know right away? You have to think about it. No, I, well, it, it it really depends on uh, it depends on perspective compression 99% of the time, how much perspective compression I need based on the, side of the, the size of the backdrop I have and the scale of the image I'm trying to create. So most of these are shot between 105 and 200 millimeters on a crop vector, on a crop camera. Cool. Yeah, no, it's just it's amazing how you, you know, some of them are just, but also as far as the art goes, like some of them are like, right in your face and some of them, this one, that one, that, that, like that one's real close and that's, is it the same model? Yep, as Andrew again, this is the same tire too in the background. Um, cool. Just flip, uh, so cross over itself. I'll kind of hurry through these. As I feel like I'm no, taking care. No, There's my modeling debut. <laughs> nice that you on the ground. Nice. And yeah. you see, you like guns, you like motorcycles, you like leather, you like hair. I like action stuff. Yeah. Action. You like action films too. I do absolutely. And the sci-fi, horror is all good. There's a sense of dream and fantasy in your pictures that you really want to capture. It seems that way. Yeah, yeah. This is a mix of medias here too. Um, this is again from the digital painting class. It's taught me a little, be a little more free. So this is a modification of a photo in ArtRage, uh, which is a really nice, app, like twenty dollar application. It's really a great uh, digital painting app. Um, same model. So the picture before, were you, were you try? It looked like her legs were gone. Were you trying to make it so her legs were not there? You trying to make it so I don't. Like she was well, in a waterfall, maybe, or yeah, I leave it open to interpretation. Right. But I didn't like the way she was wearing just a, a a lab coat more or less, and I didn't like the way that it was kind of terminated. So I just erased it and then started over. You know, what do I want it to do? And then just painted it in until it disintegrated. Uh, this image is one I actually I, I've been trying a new thing. So I wrote the book, but I wanted some of these images are just too complex. Like this one is. To teach somebody how to do this in a book would just, you know, take a tome. Right. So what I, I did is I made a video of it, and it, it's about an hour long, and I put it up on my website uh, for people who wanted to see how I did it. And I just basically start with that picture, and oh my god, it's yeah, reverse it's engineer it. Yeah, and it took me about an hour. It's not that big of a deal. Um, just using some. How did you? So how did? What was the concept? Like where did the concept for this come from? <laughs> Uh, I, I wanted to shock the model, actually. Um, the model here owns a talent agency, and we have a talent agency actually in our studio. Well, uh, So we have an in house talent agency. 
so she owns that company, and uh, we're painting, we're getting the place ready, we're actually still working on the floors and things like that, and uh, the, the thought here was to kind of create something a little more uh, in a shock value oriented, so I took it to her and I said, hey, would you be angry if the photographer did something like this to one of your pictures? And she looked at it, she goes, no, it's amazing. I go, good, because it's you. And she's like, oh, my God. You know, it took her a second to recognize it was her, which was awesome. I mean, that was like total, that was that was worth the cost of admission right there. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, so what was, yeah, it's hard to tell. Sorry, what was the, what the symbol above the crack? Is that, is it specific? Is that? No, again, you're just, you're just Playing with the whole Lovecraftian, uh, I like the arcane feel to a lot of a lot of work. I like you know, if I could shoot horror movie posters all day long, every day I would do it. That would be fantastic. Awesome. I mean, that's the would kind you, of thing I like. Would you ever want to actually make a film like a horror film? You know, I I don't know. I I'm, I'm enjoying the still frame stuff and the amount of attention I can give it. I don't know. Um, right. I haven't really kind of. My brain isn't gone down the hole. Okay, you've got how many thousands of frames, you know, that you have to light and work through. I mean, it might be fun, but I'm hoping someday to get some jobs doing movie posters. I would just love to, to do or or high fashion, use some fashion stuff because they'll let you mess with. You know, there's a lot of indie filmmakers that really can't you know, have no idea who to go to for movie posters, and there's a lot of business out there for that. Especially if you approach a movie maker and say, hey, you know, I I because I'm a movie maker, I didn't really have a real true poster for my film, so. I think that that's a that's something to look into, and you I would love know. that. I yeah. would love that. Yeah, I've got so many models who you know would instantaneously you know jump on that type of an opportunity. Uh, that would, but you know, it's the creativity. It's the part of it. I can make something that has a story behind it. Like before, when you asked about abstract or story, art. You no, know, I'm I'm torn there. I enjoy abstract art quite a bit, but I also enjoy storytelling. But I like the the combination of the two to me. Like this is like this is an abstract. You know, story time to me. Um, I just really liked it. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And just so talk a little bit about real quick that with the with the crumbling. What what did you use to crumble it like that? And in Photoshop, like what was what? Is there anything like with the like any tips you could give someone that, that wants to do something similar or that oh. kind of that effect? Well, as I said, I did the I did the video, so it's got everything from start to finish. That that's just a texture uh, that's been applied to the face, and then I used a uh, puppet warp, um, which is what I tend to use when I want to wrap something with a texture. Uh, warp used to be fine, but puppet warp is more accurate. And uh, then it's just a matter of blending it in, matching the tones, removing the colors, and and then selectively deciding what you're going to crumble. And then I added some of these like floating pieces here to kind of add a little bit of depth so as if she is falling apart. It's not just, you know, that she's like that. It's a kind of an interactive, it's still happening kind of thing. Plus, I like a little bit of this foreground element type of thing that happened. Yeah, no, that's one of my favorites so far. I mean, just because it's so different and, and so cinematic. It just, yeah, the first thing I thought it was, uh, was AI, you know. It, and it also looks very China doll. A lot of people say it looks like a China doll from a horror movie kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I can see that. It does, yeah. Oh, again, more hair, motion, um, some yeah, your brush work. Yeah, the hair. So were you a fan of Mar Marilyn Monroe and, like, her hair blowing? And, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, look who it is. We're surprised. Mr. Jason Joseph is here, another photographer. How Boy. are you, Jason Joseph? Look at this. We match. We do. We try. We, we, nah. We call. We shop at the same store. We were in the same area. So. That's right. So we're looking at uh, Scott's work, and you're just in time. I was going to talk about other photographers and, and, and social networks in a second. But uh, it'd be cool to get another another lighthearted opinion from Mr. Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Scott? How you been, man? Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, for those of you who don't know Jason Joseph, he actually is a photographer. He lives and works in New Jersey. And, uh, no, he, he lives in New Jersey. No, he lives in New York, works in Staten Island, lives in Staten Island, my bad. That's just what I meant. He doesn't have a Jersey accent. Just very close to Jersey. No, but he has a lot of friends in Jersey, so. Yes. That's what I meant. So we're looking at Scott's photography, and uh, this has a very, this has a matrix feel, right? Like, like in a sense, the... I know there's a tail, but it has that feel like she just got unattached from battery a little bit? Kind of, yeah, you could go the way. It's actually from another movie called Splice. Okay. Uh, that is a, it's a, a darker, kind of, I don't want to say a horror movie, but uh, 
kind of what happens when you clone a human, but you mix in a little bit of fish and a little bird, and you end up with something that goes horribly wrong and kills everybody. Oh, that's uh, nice. And the model really loved the the movie. In fact, her, her nickname was Dren, which is the name of the, the character from the film. She's like, if I shave my head, will you do a portrait of me as Dren? And I was like... And when you say shave yeah. head, like, do you know the picture? How, how much hair did she have to shave? Like, she shaved it all off. The razor she had like down. a big, bushy, like long, like lots of hair, right? She had, yeah. I mean, her hair was substantial. Um, although she, you know, obviously, you know, cutting it and playing with it, but yeah, she she shaved it off and put her on a mini tramp, and we basically just jumped up and down until we got the pose exactly the pose we wanted. Um, borrowed a little bits from a couple of the different shots until we got what I wanted, then just painted in the tail. You painted? Oh wow, you painted the tail, huh? Wow. Yeah. Not hard. I mean, if you really think about it, it's just a solid object with a shadow on one side and a highlight on the other with a little bit of uh, variegation. I mean, it's not really... Yeah, you know, That's one of the things I kind of learned is don't be scared to kind of paint on the picture because it's a, there's implied detail. People look at that and go, well, you know, is it a prosthetic tail? And, no, I painted it. But it's not until I tell you that so you go, oh, yeah, you know what? It does look kind of painted. That's okay, you know? They, they don't have to... They don't. If they didn't hear that, they wouldn't know it and... It's I don't necessarily good. think it looks painted. I just I think, think, I mean, obviously, painted. yeah, you think it's Photoshop because no one has a tail, you know, so. <laughs> good point. <laughs> now, this is one that I did during a Photoshop Hangout. So I would do these Hangouts. I haven't done one in a while now because when I, I do them, I got fewer and fewer people who actually came into them. And, and at one point, the last couple I did, I did by myself. And I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll just take a break from it for a few months and see if people are, are into it again. Uh, but we had a light bulb here uh, that was really annoying. We had a vent up here. Um, is, so wait, is the background good. Photoshop or no? No, this is in this Real, is shot on location. Yep, shot on yeah, location. Yeah, I thought of it. Yeah. Uh, blue strobe over here and a stick, and then uh, uh, this is all speed lights though. These are not. I didn't bring my big lights with me this day, because uh, often time when I shoot on location, I just take a bunch of uh, Nikon speed lights and uh, shoot and that. So way. where were you exactly? Is it like a bar? What is? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's actually a kind of a, it's it's a really great location with a lot of re neat brickwork and I have a picture of a bar there too, but I don't think it's one of the ones that I have in the no, is one I saved here. Uh, and the clothes, so the model do mo are the models clothed by you? Do they have their own clothes? Like we didn't really talk about the clothes aspect. Where do all the clothes well, come from? Well, often often what will happen is that, is that there's a wardrobe person there, uh, which is rare. Um, then they'll have obviously an opinion, but the vast majority of the time, the model will simply bring a couple of suitcases with the stuff, and they'll dump it on the floor, and they'll say, uh, okay, what do you want? And then, yeah, you're picking through women's underwear, deciding what you're going to put on that model. And then, wait, underwear? So, <laughs> you know, everything from the from the bra, panties, to the shoes, to it's everything. Even if it's and, not going to be visible? Uh, well, obviously, if it's not going to be visible, it doesn't matter. Right, but, right. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, because sometimes it's it does. Like, if it's, if it, like, for instance, in this one, I believe I had her take her underwear off, because it made lines out here, and I don't want to see that. You want to make it look smooth. So you just tell her, you know, get rid of the endings. And, you know, they, obviously no one's going to see anything, so they just do it, you know, because they want the picture to turn out. Um, and it's interesting, the, though, your picture, like, like this picture, the, her breast that's, that's uh, accentuated looks like a perfect, almost a perfect circle. Is that just that, the way you... No, it's actually her. It's just her breast, okay. Yeah, it's just her breast. I mean, it's a great body. She's a tattoo artist uh, right. for a living, so that's what she does. So she is covered with ink. And this was kind of a Jessica Rabbit kind of... Yeah. Pose, you know, if she was a redhead, this would be perfect. Uh, but the dress was very Jessica Rabbit, so that's the kind of the whole crux of that. That this one we kind of looked at earlier. Right. Shot in a, again a gray sweep. Um, just the hair is from about 14 different pictures, so quite a few different pictures. Um, again, great gray sweep. Same day as the other shot, actually. This one has that. She almost looks like the chick from Walking Dead. <laughs> and like, yeah, it looks like it looks like there's zombies being blown up behind. I love the light on her face in that shot. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's one of those it's one of those rule breakers. It's it's not it's not lit. You know, what kind of lighting is that? Is it a Rembrandt? Is it a wall? Yeah, it, it isn't really anything. It's just there. It, it's dramatic. I mean, one of my favorite quotes is, um, "It's not what you light that's important. It's what you don't light that's important." Yeah. So every picture needs to have shadow, in it. and if it doesn't, you know, you're taking a three-dimensional object putting it out as a two-dimensional representation being a photo, and then expecting someone to look at it and go, wow, that looks flat or uninteresting. You know, that's, I think, where HDRs kind of um, 
you know, breathe new life into a lot of photography is because people could look at it and go, wow, it's, it's almost as good as what it was when I saw it in real life because the dynamic range of the picture now is about the 12 or 15 stops that my eye is instead of the four stops of the camera. Um, I think the shadow and tone is, is a huge part of photography, and, you know, it's, it's all about light. And the people who just take the snapshots and, or use the on-camera flash, you're missing so much of, you know, you're not going to get a, a shadow with an on-camera flash. Just turn it off. And that's why I'm jealous of all these film sets that they can, they can afford. I've been, I've been on tons of them. They can afford to lay light the entire, fill light the entire thing, and then they'll slowly take light away, which is, like, pretty cool to watch, you know? Yeah, I, I very, I would love to shoot on a, a film set someday. You know, just the props and the rooms, I mean, can do so much storytelling. You know, I'm just, I'm stuck with a gray sweep, although we do have, uh, we, have a, a, we have almost 3,000 square foot of studio now, so we've got a, a couple of cars we're going to be pulling in there, and, and so you're going to see a lot more car photos coming up and, and more motorcycle photos in the coming uh, months because I'm going to have one uh, to fiddle with. And then we're going to build sets and do some other stuff. Like I want to do a... Uh, a zombie, or not a zombie, uh, a vampire pinup uh, shoot. So in a couple months, you'll start to see those wander in. So we might do a, uh, a mausoleum set with a, with a coffin, and we'll play around with it. Well, that'd be cool. Like, you talk about movie posters. I think maybe just making fake movie posters would be kind of cool. Oh, you know, it, it, it's certainly something I might do with some of these, but I don't know if the words detract from the photo. But you're right, it certainly could. Well, you I mean, make, it make the words story. funny. Yeah, I mean. How yeah. the movie can call vampires it doesn't have to be like an original, stuff <laughs> like that, you know. True. But Jason, so Jason does photography, and I know he is very opinionated when it comes to HDR. If he wants to, if you want to jump in and just no, talk, no, you're good. Wow, oh, gosh, <laughs> um, yeah, Scott knows where I stand on HDR. To me, HDR is it should stand for highly degraded rendering, um, and I I think it's it's um, akin to in the photography world. It would have to be um, the distant cousin in the painting world of um, black velvet Elvis paintings. <laughs> it's a tool that has a great purpose in photography. As Scott, I'm sure you'd agree. You know, it's great when it's it's wielded properly, um, but it's just been abused and it's turned it's turned on. Um, it's turned photography on its head for the general public because people are starting to think that this is okay and this looks good and I don't think it's hard. So you're saying it's being overused? You're saying that people, it should be used for special occasions and people are just using it? Like yeah, when it's used as a tool and it's used as something that extends the dynamic range so that you can get a better sense of, some, of a place or a thing um, the way our eye is meant to see it, that's great. But when you lean on it like a crutch and you start making images of things that aren't really all that interesting, when you take that crutch away and you push and push and push and you, um, you make colors that are just completely unnatural. Um, the halos around the objects. Yeah, there's halos and then you know fluorescent greens and grass and... Um, it, it's just... Uh, there's, not, there's not an attention to detail that the masters of people that um, I'm actually the lineage of that, that taught how to print a print. Um, it, there's not that attention to every single tone in the image. And like Scott says, not only the light that's there, but the light that's not there. Now people are pushing this effect and they're looking back at the, at the whole of it and they go, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. But I can look, I can, you can show me any of these pictures and I'll say, well, what about this blockage of black right here? And what about this here? It's not like this over here in this other area. And I, I see these things. And, and when, I, the, when is it okay? When is it artistic and it's, it's okay that's artistic? And when is it like just, well, I mean, because there's an artistic license, right? Well, it, here's, here's the, I, I guess, kind of, it's, it's almost the same thing with Photoshop filters. You can, you can throw a solarized filter on anything and, and say, look, I made art because you've got a really horrible picture. It isn't compositionally got anything going for it. It's lit you know, poorly. It's posed poorly. It's just it's not a good picture. So in order to save it, you make it black and white, add noise, solarize it, or crank the HDR up on it and say, look, I saved the picture. Now it's a good picture. Well, no, it's just dramatically different. So in HDR, like, you know, Trey and, and some of these people... They don't just throw that into photomatics, adjust a few sliders and hit OK. I 
when they do the ZHC application like photomatics, but then they go in and they mask in other bits and pieces to make the composition, to make the story, to make it what it's supposed to be. There's a lot of hours that go into a really nice HDR. But again, you have to start with a good picture. And I think that's really, you know, I think Jason's agree. If you don't have a good picture, turning into a massive HDR fanfare is not going to save it. It's just mm -hmm. now it's an ugly no. nasty picture. Moderation. Yes, yeah, sorry, I muted for a second. I was trying to reshare another another one of our uh, of YouTube. If you're watching, hey, our conversation, Scott Dewell is my guest, Jason Jones is my drop, dropping guest. That's, I stumble. Yeah, so let's talk, you mentioned Trey Rackland a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about this culture of Duke Plus and how there are a ton of photographers on here of all different skills and they take over the stream. What, you know, whether you can talk, what are your thoughts on the different photographers and you know, there has some of that grown and, you know, uh, what you like, what you don't like, and uh, we can start with whoever, we can start with you if you want, Scott, if there's, if there's certain people that you, that you look at every day and you want to find new stuff and then other people that you're not sure, like, I mean, you don't have to be mean, it's up to you what you want to say, it's cool. Well, I, I have, I have so many circles and I try and organize, I, I'm, I'm maybe a little anal about it, I have my photographers organized, I have my inspirational circle, and those are the people that I look at and say, I want to see what they're posting. And a few of them are those annoying G Plus users that just constantly reshare everything. Like in a minute, they may share six things. So you look at their stream and it's like just, just a spew of stuff. But there are two or three of those people they will repost things that are just amazing. And they find it from other websites and they repost them. And they're sharing it's a constant feed. But in general, so I have my inspirational circles. Then I have my street photographers, my landscape photographers, my model photographers. And then I've got the people who give you a circle. And I always, I, I always copy to a new circle and then I look through each person and say, do I want them? Like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big critic. We were talking about this earlier about street photography. Just because you took it and turned it into a black and white does not make it a street photo worthy of the digital bits it's you know, on. It's got to have a composition. It has to tell a story. It should be a decent piece of art before you turn it into a black and white photo and then call it street art. So there's so many street photographers that I've seen on Google Plus that I'm just like, not, not, I have no interest in following this person. But then there's a couple that, it, that are just amazing. And I'm like, wow. I actually am going to follow some street photographers, which is bizarre for me because I have no interest in that at all, but I appreciate it when I see it. And it, uh, Jason is, is a lot more active on Google Plus than I am when it comes to the you know interacting with because he's the hangout king. <laughs> he's one of them, yeah. Yes. Uh, but that that's that's how I'm that's how I'm organizing it. Okay, and this one question real quick, what a crop what a crop, great name. Uh and you can both answer this too. What do you think of black and white HDR? Is that you know, it, just it, it, again, the, the idea behind an HDR is to capture as many stops as possible because your camera can only see four. You've got to piece together enough to get your 12 so you can go, hey, that's what it looked like. I mean, yeah, I guess you had to be there kind of thing. A black and white HDR, I don't know what to think about that. I mean, I guess... I guess if you, if, if it's, I guess it would be just the equivalent of tuning a regular black and white to make it work, but you're going to have more data. I don't know. I... I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scoff at that one for a moment. Uh, let's, we, no, we get HDR. You know, you know what yeah. that is. Yeah, you're not a fan of HDR. We get it. What? Black and white HDR selective color. Ooh. What is that? What does that mean? The rose. A rose in yeah. selective color. Yeah. Yes. So the whole thing will be black and white, and then there'll just be one awesome. thing in the photo that'll be in color, but the whole photo will be HDR. That's a, good, good <laughs> That's a great. We should, you know, what we should do. We should create a group just for that. Yeah, Absolutely. and then set well, it on fire. There are so <laughs> many, there are so many groups. That, like, to me, there are different levels of different kinds of photography. But it, I don't know if it's gotten out of hand or it's awesome because I'm not, a, I'm not a photographer. But to see, all right, there's like we're having a theme Wednesday and we're doing this and we're this kind of photography. You know, your conceptual portrait, and you know, Jason, what do you consider yourself specifically? That's bored, you know. <laughs> boring. I, me, boring? You're boring? I'm a portrait um, photographer who hasn't hit, in, hit his stride yet and is um, looking to do that this year, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm a portrait guy. I shoot some interiors and um, I just try to make genuine, genuine portraits that are full of real emotion and no, no 
BS. That's right. about it, really. But like, you look at people, you know, there's also, there's, you know, you get Trevor Radcliffe, you get Thomas Hawk, and then other people I've met throughout. I've met, you know, there's Colby Brown, Vivian Couture, who we've met in real life, and Boris as well, and Shirley Lowe, Billy Wilson. I mean, and then there's a ton more. Those are just the names that came out of the top of my head. And so if you want to talk about their work or someone else's work, are they, they're all in different, they all do different kinds of photography? I mean, they're all, or some, most of them are portrait or, or real life capturing, photo walk type photography. I don't, you know, if that's well, different. Yeah, the whole group is, I mean, everybody mentioned there, you know, they're, they're all across the board from landscape to portrait to, you know, that random dog on the street. I mean, it, it, Billy is, is probably, you know, one of the more inspirational uh, and, and surely, you know, I, I look at their work and, and I find ideas in there and, and unique methods for how they implement things. And then, uh, you know, the, the others, you know, that you, you, you find what you like in their stream. You know, they shoot a lot of landscapes. They, they go, here's the thing, they go to a lot of cool places. I am in Milwaukee. I don't Milwaukee. travel. Milwaukee. So I'm, I'm not going, yeah, Milwaukee. I, I'm not going to China and I'm not what? seeing the Eiffel Tower and I don't get any waterfalls. I got corn. Snow, cheese, and I got a couple Harleys, and uh, maybe some beer. That's about it. And I don't have, I don't have the access to the access. locations. Yeah, but now cheese and Harleys are, are <laughs> and beer top list. Right but you know, they'll, they'll always tell you the hardest place to take a picture is in your own backyard because you're used to looking at it every day, so you don't see the beauty in it. Where somebody from Thailand would come here and go, "Oh my gosh, stop to shoot!" And I go to Thailand and go, "Oh my gosh." You know that guy too, sweet. <laughs> yeah, same guy. He's been in the hangouts before. He doesn't wear a shirt and he just hums a lot. And he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wang Fang. That's a real person. Uh, cool. So, do you? I mean, is there a, a favorite? Is there so? Is so? Is there other photographers that that you guys want to give a shout out to? Someone that people don't know about, maybe besides yourselves, or like, is there someone that like? Um, I think Kevin Knight is probably an undersung guy. I mean, you know, I don't yeah. even like to say that. Like, who's get enough? Who gets enough attention? It's not even who gets enough attention. Just maybe that. someone that's new or that's still refining their way around. That you like their work or yeah. I think I think Kevin's really amazing. And the thing about him is he's not a Google guy. He's not a social guy. He's just a shooter. He goes out there all the time. He's an editorial guy out in L.A. That's what my ex-girlfriend uh, said. What? Huh? <laughs> no, never mind. He, he does shoot. some really great work. You know, he shoots artists in their spaces. Um, he's shot some. He's shot Muse just late, uh, lately. The band, and um, he's just out there pounding the pavement with his with his camera on assignment for different little magazines and things. And um, he's a grumpy photographer guy. <laughs> You know, he, doesn't, he doesn't care to do ah. special, and he just likes to go make images, and he does it really, really well. And he does something that's really hard for a lot of photographers is he can light something and make it not look lit. And he can also n put his lights away and just shoot without light, and he can shoot with his light and make it look like, you know... It was just an overcast day. It's he's it, got a very subtle touch, so I I really dig his work. So what he's a bastard though, but I dig his work. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that about you too sometimes. Yeah. What about you? Is there anyone that you want to jump out and throw out there, Scott? Or? Yeah, my uh, so I'm in a studio and we're 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 five photographers uh, together and share the rent and the ideas and so on. And, and uh, there's a guy who's been with me for a couple different studios now named uh, Corey Albertson. And he's, he's somewhat new to Google Plus or he's got less than a thousand followers, I think. I put the link uh, into the chat there so you can propagate it if you'd like. But uh, it's uh, his last name is Albertson, A-L-B-R-E-C-H-T-S-O-N, Corey. And he is, uh, he's a photographer for a living, but he shoots like furniture and, and so on for uh, a company that makes products and sells them in the nursing home industry. So all day long he's shooting lamps and waste baskets and stuff like that. The man can light like nobody's business. Just an amazing photographer. Uh, he mostly speed lights, but we share the studio space together. So we share the, our, we have a bunch of Einsteins and, and all the modifiers. And we basically just set things up and shoot them and and he's a awesome guy, and a darker, again, a darker photographer, um, very creative dude. So uh, he's a good friend, and and someone I think that that here on Google Plus he would do really well um, mm -hmm. if people got got to know him. So speaking of Google Plus, yeah, now so Google Plus is played with pictures, um, 
months, and they rearranged, you know, the post now, the pictures are bigger, and now instead of one picture, sometimes there's two or three together, and, you know, the, there's a lot of photographers that say, oh, I don't like how the big box looks, or the, the light box, or this, or the colors, or, I mean, how do you guys feel about what it, how it looks now and how it works on social on Google Plus and the social networks. I mean, do you have any opinion? Does it take away from work? Does it add to work? I mean, anybody? I just this morning um, was listening to uh, oh I forget her name. I forget, a, a young young female photographer to really out of sorts about the whole black box thing. I don't mind it. You know, it's like yeah. it's a free place. This place is free. You know, yeah. go. Go spend money to put your photos somewhere else. I mean, what are you going to do? It's going to change. Right. And in, in eight, ten months from now, there are going to be different changes, and you're not even going to remember these changes. Like, just live your life. Go make. Yeah, we're saying the same thing about the white space. The same thing. No, it's yeah, bad. whatever. It's like, can you remember what the old Facebook was like? No, right. not, not the not the Facebook that has the chat. My space. The Facebook from <laughs> a year ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it's going to change. Yeah. It's going to adopt and in. It, it, you know, it will be based on feedback, you know, if her right. voice is loud enough and there's enough other people believe it, they're going to end up with options. So how would you like to show this photo? I like, I remember when Flickr did that, you could like pick the color, a black or a white background, depending on what you were looking for. Yeah, and it's amazing to me, so that now you post all these pictures on your social networks, but then there's this Pinterest and, and Instagram and, and, and uh, what Flickr and Tumblr and all these other sites are specific for pictures. I mean, what do you, do you like, do you like those kinds of things? Those see, those sites are very specific to focus on pictures. And Lotus Carol, sorry, someone's like, what about Lotus Carol? I didn't mention, sorry, Lotus Carol. Anyway. I'm a big fan of 500 pics because it's just, it is what it is. This is that a website with 500pics.com? Uh, what's that? Is that a website? 500px.com, yeah. Cool. Um, anybody that's a photography fan should already be aware of it. If they're not, they're going to they're going to be up till about 4 a.m. this morning, and I apologize for turning me on to it so late. But um, it, it's social, too. But really, mainly, the thing I dig about it is there's such a um, there's such a such a level of quality of images there that this is where art directors are going to look. This is where people that buy photography, that hire photographers to make images, go to look. It's a really good place. And I, I'm surprised that people that are so concerned with having their images plussed and loved and shared and humped on Google, you know, what are you doing on 500 pics? Uh, not much. And I'm just as guilty. Right. I, I'm, I really am. I, I've got a few there. They're not, you know, organized. I don't. I get. Organized. There's only so much time in a day. You know, you want yeah, to do other stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can't and I'm be a very social guy. Like I like to. I like company. You need to kick you know. it. Yeah. But um, 500 pixels is, is a serious um, powerhouse if you're a photographer. What about you, Scott? Do you do you use all these the web? I mean, you mentioned Flickr. Do you use Pinterest, Instagram, all those other things? And, like the I, and then the idea that you can add layers. I mean, the idea that you can take a, an ordinary picture and then put a layer on it, and now it's like kind of like better than it than it was, or than it, I don't know. I I I don't use Pinterest at all. Um, yeah. 500px again. I'm just as guilty. I don't have much on there. Uh, I, I, space there. Flickr and of course Green Martini for for most of the stuff I'm working in because that's where I'm getting my work. You know, I got hired off of Green Martini. You know, I got a model who approached me. So I, that's the kind of work that I'm trying to capture. You know, be I have actually not sold an image. Uh, oh, I take that back. A uh, record company is going to buy a couple of them, but. That was just somebody here on Google Plus. So I get Google Plus credit for finding a customer. But well, there you go. You're not going to find as great as 500px. Might I mean maybe you're not going to find the same kind of connection that you do on Plus. Right? Yeah, exactly. But you know, I don't sell my work. You know, most of the time I either shoot for a specific client, or you know, or the model wants portfolio work done. But I, I don't really ever have an opportunity to sell my pictures. I haven't really ever tried, in truth. Uh, maybe a 500 px you know, will work, but my goal is to try and get the shooting dates. You know, I want I want someone to hire me to shoot. Like I've got um, next Thursday, I've got a, a shoot with a magazine here that's local. I've got um, I do work with the uh, Miss Wisconsin pageant, so I shoot uh, for the Miss America group, and then I do um, uh, so, some different things. I don't shoot senior portraits, and I might shoot a wedding or two, but I've got to be I interesting, and I won't yeah. shoot the receptions because I'm not uh, in uh, that whole. You, yeah. People with food in their mouths. I want to light everybody and pose everybody, so I'm so 
particular. I would do engagement photos all day long. Though. That's fun because you, you, the bride will listen to you. You pose or you light or you make beautiful art. Um, so that's so just, what do you, yeah, I, I would agree, though. 500px is a great site for yeah, eye candy, though. Cool. 500px it is. And also or, or, or don't forget DeviantArt. DeviantArt, too. DeviantArt, I've heard of. So what, so what do you guys think of paparazzi? Are, they just, are those pictures awful? Are they just facets? Or do you think they, or, or is there an art to it? I don't even consider it photography, truthfully. No. It's just, it's, to me, it's just snapshots. snapshots and they're, they're getting pictures of somebody in a compromising situation because it's worth a lot of money. Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, there's a good chance that if you met me when I was out and you told me you were a paparazzi, that <laughs> you'd get my back at best. You, you wouldn't be able to find me. But paparazzi or not, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hang out with a paparazzi. As, right, as awful as paparazzi is, do they ever get pictures that are good, even if, they're, even if the way they went to get them were ridiculous? I mean, well, are any of them professional? Yeah. No, no, well, it, it's, all they're trying to do is get a picture of something that's embarrassing right. or newsworthy because that photo is then worth money. It doesn't right. matter how, how well it's lit. It doesn't matter how it's posed. It doesn't matter how it's, I mean, complete, completely off-center and blurry. But it's some model who's overweight now or has a baby bump, and it's worth you know forty grand to them. That's right. how they make their money. They don't care about the artistic quality of that photo. Only now I'm saying this from my own experience, which is zero. So hmm. but yeah, yeah, but just it, my it is interesting about value, right? The idea that a picture of some celebrity that's fat now or whatever you want, or in a sexual composition or whatever you want to call it, you know, is worth way more money. Like forty thousand dollars, and you know, you guys are doing real art, and to have someone pay forty thousand dollars is not as, as simple as it is for a celebrity picture, right? So, you know, it's the value, what we value in society, or what's value. Well, it's the yeah. buyer. It's, it's the worth the buyer. The newspaper wants a picture of a baby bump. They'll yeah. pay for it. Where you know, a picture of you know, beautiful street art or a woman on a motorcycle or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's for advertising. That's different. That's not news. News is worth a lot of money. What would you guys be? For, would you be forced, like a like an actress or an actor, like taking a shoot a shoot of them, just a professional shoot, or would that be cool? Would that be weird? No, would you do what? I would love that. Yeah, a celebrity yeah. shoot. Yeah, a celebrity shoot. That'd be cool. Would you be into no, that? I missed, I missed the question. Would I said, would you be into doing like a celebrity shoot if you've got a paid gig with an actor or an actress? Oh yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing a couple this year. Cool. Yeah. Anything you can tell us about? Still any raps or? Um. One's for it's for an author, and it's it's going in a couple of celebrities' books. Um. I can't say whose. Um, oh. Three of them, though. They come out in June. Um, same picture. Um, I think what Scott was talking about with the paparazzi, and, and from what I know of Scott, and I feel the same way, is that we respect the people that we point our cameras at, and we know that it's a, um, it's a privilege to do what we do. And um, when you're a paparazzi, that's not an issue. And so it's completely different... Uh, is a completely different motivation. And while there might seem to be a ton of money there, um, those guys could be some really seedy... They have to be, almost, by definition. Yeah. Um, And you can chase the money, and they can make big checks, but, you know, when you chase what you love, the money just comes. So, yeah, no, and I agree. It's not about not always. About I really, money. literally, yeah. when I say if yeah. if I were to find out that someone was a paparazzi, I I wouldn't have space for them in my life. And mm-hmm. because of the type of photography that I'm I'm moving into doing, like the shoots I was just talking about, I can't keep people like that around me. I I, I can't associate with them. Like one of the most telling things I remember hearing was was that one of the first people on site of Princess Diana when she was in that horrible car accident was a paparazzi who stood there and took pictures okay. rather than try and help. You know, that's just, that's just that shows you it's exactly... Like selling your talking. soul, selling your soul to, to, yeah, well, to, yeah. to, to whoever. But yeah. So I don't even consider them really photographers. They do something that, you know, their goal is to, is to make money off of the image. They really don't care anything about the person they're taking a picture of. Jason really wrapped it up well. I agree. He did, yeah. yeah. And also you mentioned rock bands. I think it's kind of cool, like, to think about uh, photographers that are they go around and film like take 
I guess some bands have their own photographers, right? Professional photographers that travel oh, yeah, with them. Sure. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, Kevin, the guy I was talking about earlier in LA, he's got a couple. Of, he he was in. Um, he worked in the record industry for a long time, and um, he's got some buddies that that's what they do. They go around and and uh, and shoot bands. In fact, one of his friends, and I, I wish I could remember his name, shot a time lapse of like a whole day like in a shoot and just sped it up. And he attached the video camera to his camera, and you can see everywhere he was going behind the stage as he was taking the pictures. It was pretty pretty dope. I'll try to find the link so uh, maybe you can share it. You know, I love that. Cool. Well, let's. I'm gonna wrap up a little bit, and then we do conversations plus. But I'm gonna, if you're out there, I'm gonna invite some some audience members in, and maybe some of the photographers that we mentioned will want to jump in and have a whole discussion. I oh, I noticed Carol. I guess she had written an article about the black bars. Um, that's what one of Proc was telling me. But um, so it's just a G plus wrap up. Just questions about G plus. What uh, most people answer Hangouts for number one, not to sway you. But what's your favorite part of G plus? And it's for both Scott and Jason. Do you have a favorite part? If it's not hangouts, it's something else. Favorite part for me is definitely hanging out. Yeah. Definitely the fact that it's given us back what the internet and technology has taken away. We've been hiding behind our devices and typing and texting and blah, 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 blah. And now we're back communicating the way we're supposed to communicate face to face. So it's, you know, truly the age of the Jetsons, and I dig it. <laughs> Everything else, though, eh, not so much. This. Absolutely. It's nice to have a platform for your work, though. Another another platform. I don't even think about that. Yeah. I I throw stuff up because it's like, it, I think it kind of really and honest, uh, in all honesty, it just gives me an excuse to come and keep meeting people. That's cool. What about you, Scott? Is it is it hangouts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I really like the hangouts, but also I want to say that just on a on a scale of of accessibility to individuals. I mean, I've met people on Google Plus that I mean, you consider almost unattainable in real life. Like, you jump into Facebook, you're not going to be able to interact with, you know, the rock stars of today. You know, you've got, like, people like Hugh Jackman and, and Britney Spears and April Summers and some of these other people that, I mean, not even just in the photography universe, but outside of that, that could pop into a Hangout or plus one one of your works or comment on your work. And you actually seem like you're much closer to them. Maybe that's because Google Plus is still kind of small, but I, I don't think that that's the case. I think it's just the fact that, that it's not so much a this flood of vague posts and like me spam and vote for me spam that we see so much on Facebook that it's it's almost it's almost like it's almost like junk mail now where I have to sort through all the crap to get to the two or three things I like. Where on Google Plus. You put people in different circles, you adjust how much you want to see there. And so my stream, when I look at it, is all interesting to me. When I look at it, I, every picture that pops up, every article that pops up, as soon as someone I, I respect their opinion, they don't share crap. Or, you know, that's what Facebook is for. If you're not sure, mm -hmm. throw it on there. If you, you vetted it and you like it, then you put it on Google+. Plus. The quality of what you get here, yes, with the Hangouts, but just the general feel of the quality of the product is much higher to me. Yes, it doesn't have the people yet, but if it maintains the quality level and the capability, uh, the accessibility to some of these movie stars and these people that, that everybody sees. I mean, how, how often do you get the Dalai Lama on right. Facebook to do a Hangout? I mean, no, you're right. And the Google name is important. I mean, I think that Google comes to reputation. I mean, the idea that Facebook, I guess some people have it as their home page or whatever, but you have to go there. That Google is most people's home pages, your phone, Google is there. It's part of it. It's not something separate. So there is that that was already built in. I think people, there's a whole debate about whose privacy is better, Google or Facebook, and who's going to get what, and da, da, da. but at the end of the day, people are getting themselves out there, and let's be honest, we all have phones and things like that, and our data, and whatever, people are going to find us and track us, and, and who cares? Really? Unless you're a criminal, what does it really matter, right? Um, Cool. What what feature is there a feature from a photography standpoint of view? Uh, standpoint, I can't even talk. Point of view or, or some kind of uh, overall feature that you would love to see that hasn't been yet, or anything that comes to mind that you love photography related or. Uh, I think that related. all pretty girls should have to have their phone numbers here, right? <laughs> pretty only pretty girls. Okay. Should there be a hot or not system too? We can rate them. <laughs> 
Scott's like, I don't need that. I'm good. But uh, anyway. well, the the thing the thing that Google Plus needs to work on is the ability to organize your photos. And you've got this tie to Picasso that's kind of there. It's very difficult right now. If you name a photo once you upload it, it's almost impossible to rename it because you've got to go back into the web version of Picasso and fix it. And it, that whole mess. It's it's just a convolution of products that are bolted together. I can I, I see that it's going to be streamlined sooner than later, but right now I find that tenuous. And the ability to post multiple pictures per per post has has been an issue. Although you you mentioned that that that's changed, I haven't experienced that yet. Uh, I can see this becoming more of a blog stream of sorts. You know, the quality of the posts on Google Plus is so much higher, and it's not that the it's not just the unhappy face and then the barrage of oh what's wrong what's wrong you know that doesn't happen in here this is a you get a high quality lengthy share of information that people like or don't like or share or what have you uh, I think the posting multiple pictures per article will be important but otherwise they're just I, I like it it's there's there's nothing really to dislike about it other than the organization you get spoiled by Flickr who has amazing organizational skills or capabilities and then Google Plus is still in its infancy. Yeah, cool. Karen Shark just said, Dan, you're going to be up all night on 500px, so sorry about that, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> but then and brought up what a crack said, hey, what a crack. The cost set up is such a mess, uh, I have a hell of a time organizing their, my photos, so it's just like you were saying. I think Scott's right, though. Uh, definitely, to answer the question more seriously, we really need the, uh, we really need the option to um, an RC conception who's phenomenal, RC, you're the best, dude. Um, brought this up a few days back, is to be able to, you know, put images throughout your, your post, you know, make it more like a blog, give people the control. And the reason that they should do it, and I, I tagged um, she in this, and I didn't get any response, which really ticked me off because they, they always respond when um, whenever we made an attempt at communication. They kind of let Well, they do, in fairness, so they get a lot of, I mean, they get a lot of messages. And maybe that's not his area. Well, I think that, that they didn't want to answer it, and, and I'll tell you why. This is why I think that they don't want to do that, is that, um, or why they should consider it, rather. As it stands now, if somebody wants to post like that, their, their only option is to do it in a blog. So if you're doing it in a blog, it's forcing the people to leave Google Plus and go to the blog to get that content. Well, there's a big war going on right now of, of not only how many users use a, a social media site, be it Facebook, Pinterest, or, or you know, the big G+, but how much time per day they spend there. So there are lots of little things that these um, companies do to make sure that we spend as much time as possible here. So it seems ridiculous to me that, you know, they're giving, giving it away to someone else when they can just give us the option to make it like a Twitter and, a, you know, you can do a tiny little post or you can make a really long post and customize that post to look exactly the way you want it to. Um, and so you're saying, like, to, to have the example you're giving is, like, Instead of having pictures at the bottom, you have pictures like in between text, right? Right. Like a magazine article, almost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like maybe you want to show a how-to. Maybe Scott wants to show how he likes something. We start with this, and ba 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 ba, and here's a picture, and then we move on, and we shoot it like this, and it looks like this, and ba 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 on to the next thing. We don't have that option. You, when you want to do something like that, you've got to do a blog. Now you or have a video. To, now you have to right. Now you have to leave Google. Um, and well, the other thing too, the other thing option too would be. You know, on, on Google.com, they present a preview or something. In that, well, white space, whatever, if you were able to, like, click on the link and the link kind of open next to you so you could look, look at that, that would be cool too, right? Sure. Uh, that's, it's up to the coders, however they want to do it. Right. The other thing that I think is, is really sad that they took away is you used to have this nice little bit of information when someone would hover over a name. And it told me, Scott is a photographer and I'm interested in and you can fill out a little it was like a little calling card right now with this my only complaint with the new change is they took that away and there's very little bit of information there we don't have the time to click through all the people that add us and see who they are and what they do and 
if I want to know the people that are adding me, I have to click on them. That's one click. Then I have to get to their page. And then I have to click on the about. So now I'm like two clicks in. If I do that for five, ten people, the t amount of time in a day goes through the roof. So this okay. is what I said to Chi. I think that's part of the reason they took it away because they know that if they take so it away... You're, you're saying that the whole, every, all the new changes they made was because they were embarrassed by that thing that came out. And, we, and I talked to Eric Grice a little bit about this, the three minutes or whatever that people spend on the site, and they figured, all right, if we make everything take I, more time, it'll take longer possible. here. I but won't that also make people not want to use Google Plus? It takes well, see, longer. that's exactly my point. That's exactly my point, brother. And it's like this. If you give us back the ability to quickly find, Google talks about speed in Chrome and speed in their searches. If you give me the ability to find the people and connect with the people that I want to connect with quickly on a hover, a little bit of information comes up. Nope, not interested in that person. This one, this one. As I hover over them and those cards pop up and I can read and say, oh, I want to go to this person's about page, right? You're now making it possible for me to have many more interactions and many more relationships here that make me want to come back and spend more time. So in the long run, you build in much more time spent on, on the platform and many more reasons to spend time on the platform. Paul Rastan is telling me there is a way to set up the hover card to show that information, if that's true. I'm, I mean, I didn't very, very little and it's very limited. It's not very limited. Much. I, I had a paragraph that was this long. It was a uh, it was the big obnoxious little box that you know, but I mean, on also they did it. But you know, but you make a good point. When when on the add to circles, when you see the ten people that add you to circles, why not let uh, on that display information there more than their name? Display all that information mm -hmm. on their profile there, and then if they want to change it, they can make it private. But that would just make it so much easier. When you see add to circles, instead of just seeing names, you could see everybody that's going around. Uh, see not just their their name, but their city. And maybe where they work, and maybe their sure. even their bragging rights. How much? How cool would it be if you could see people's the bragging rights? is like one of the funniest things, right? So that might be cool to be like, oh yeah, well that this guy has a sense of humor. That's kind of funny, right? That's kind of interesting things like that. But you, uh, could, fit, yeah, you could fit 300 characters of text in a, in, a, in a small little box. You know? Yeah. Cool. My uh, rule is I won't add anybody to a circle who doesn't have a profile. You know, if you're not right. going to come and fill out your profile, I, I really don't need. I really don't care what you have to say. So I'd love to know that. You know, if the profile is blank, just, just don't even bother putting them in my circles. Right. So you get circled by all these people. You know what it's like to get circled by a hundred plus people in a day, and then you mm. can't. You no, can't, can't make the judgment call who to circle, and you don't have the time to do it. So they're really, really, really. I think that they thought they were doing something good in doing that, but I, I don't think. They would think in the long term. I think it's a mistake, and I think that in the future we're going to see that that might turn around. I, I think. I would. Well, you're you're a good whiner, so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We all are, but I think that you're right. I think that they're gonna. It, it's hard for me to believe that they want to make the product harder to use and more annoying to use because in the long run that's not gonna be good for anybody. So I would think that they want it to be better, and whatever for whatever reason, like they have the great comments and then they change the great comments to the black comments, and so I think that they're. You know, they this design they built from scratch, and the other one wasn't. So I think there was a lot that maybe they just didn't cover, and they wanted to get it released by a certain time. And so, but I know it's not an excuse. Maybe I'm not Google. Not any excuses. They should, you know, get their stuff together. But I think uh, it's great. I think we're looking at a little child baby prodigy that has so much growing up to do, and when it's mature, it's going to be amazing. And then we'll move on to the next thing, whatever that is. And then the next thing will come out, and they'll try to compete. What do you guys think? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Hangouts? Is there, like, a word or a person or a or, or feeling when you're about to, like, when you're thinking about hanging out? Or? International would be mine. I have I sat here and watched, you know, this digital painting class, or I'll just join a photography hangout, and there's people from all around the world that, you know, I was trying to teach myself Japanese probably about a decade ago, and I eventually gave up because you have to be able to speak it and interact with people and it just wasn't happening. And when I jumped on here, I, you know, a lot of Japanese circles I joined, and I try and do the, the hangouts. So they want to learn English, they want to learn Japanese. It was a really cool platform to be able to do that that didn't exist before. Uh, so I love the international capabilities, you know, just the people you would never have met, you know. What are my chances of running into Jason on Facebook? You know, I, I never would have met him, you know. And here, 
you know, that's he's the the hangout rock star photographer. So you know, <laughs> that was pretty cool to be able to run into these people. You know, I never would have met them. So it's you know, it's just the international. The boundaries of of the product are limitless. You know, I could see, you know, you've got. Um, uh, run up in space there at the International Space Station. Pretty soon we have a moon base, and it'll be on. You know, be able to hang out with people who are on the moon, and you know, it's, hmm. yeah, multi-planet. Where it's going? Cool. Yeah, no, there's just so much that I'm trying to keep up with the comments, and and uh, this comment tracker is actually pretty good. Uh, people love. Uh, yeah, there, is there anyone besides photographers? I know maybe you guys shout out photographers and not to put you in the spot again. But is there anyone that's uh, that that art or, or other cool to hang out with? Is there or are there I don't know pages? Anything you want to promote? I know you both have your own page. Or I know Jason has Jason and jo jo Joseph Photography. I don't know. Is there anything or not? Or I'll skip that one. I have um, a I have a theme on Mondays. I sponsor a, a yeah. or curate Modeling Monday. For people who want to, you know, post pictures of models that they took, or nice. a well-done portrait it doesn't have to be a professional model. I mean, it's just a, a great, a well-done, well-lit, cared-for portrait. Yeah, I saw there was Wet Wednesdays, and at first that sounded a little sexual, but it turns out that's just pictures of the water or something like that. I like the themes. If you're yeah. looking for something to shoot, and you're like, well, I really don't know what I want to do today. You know, look at the themes for the day, and go, okay, well, I'll go take a picture of a toad somewhere. It's Toad Thursday. It's Tree Tuesday. It's you know. I think that's kind of fun. It gives people a goal. You know, some some of us, you know, we're starving for what we want to shoot, and to be able to go out and, and say, well, here's four ideas for things that people are saying. If you post this today, I might reshare it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, followers are like gold. You know, to some people. They're gold, Jerry. Gold. Yes, I'm not so much concerned about it. You know, if they want to follow me, they follow me. It's not like on Facebook. You know, like you uh, like my page, like my page, like my page. Plus one, like yeah, they're all just numbers. At the end of the day. You could have amazing posts, have no plus ones. You could have a piece of garbage, have a thousand plus ones. At the end of the day, it is what it is. So, you know. Uh, it's, but it's reach. You know, it's marketing reach. You know, how many people listen to what you have to say and it makes you feel good if that number is big? And that's really what it comes down to. Right. But again, even though that number is big, doesn't mean that's really your reach. So it's, it's funny sure. how that works. Um, yeah. Well, it's like, and, um, it's like newspaper circulation. Just because you get the paper doesn't mean you read it. Well, yeah. yeah. What were we going to say, Jason? Oh, you asking uh, things to plug? I was just thinking. Yeah, gonna plug something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Larry uh, Fournier has a, a really great use of the platform, and he's doing a cooking show on Sundays where he's um, instructing people to cook um, from around the globe, and he has them um, sends them a list of shopping of ingredients to go shop for, and uh, then instructs them through a whole meal and teaches them and ans answers their questions and um, it's got a pretty pretty good little rap going on with that and that's uh, like Sundays I think around 4 o'clock he does it or so. Awesome. Um, you know these, these these themes they're starting to trend which is which is interesting too the trending topics and you know some people are annoyed and hating the trending topics and now it's really in the forefront even though it was in the in the back of search and, and it's interesting to see people like a lot of people, and I was doing it too just because it was funny and, and just to promote certain things is cool. But now hashtag, getting hashtags is trending, yes, no, bacon, I don't know. It's, but, but I saw Wet Wednesdays and some of it. So it does bring some of that attention to it. I don't know. It would be, I mean, do you ever click on some of the trending topics? Do you ever see what it's about? Do you ever, does that know nothing new? I, no. I rarely do, and I found out someone t told me today that... Um, with Jam and Joe in LA, she said, "You were on yesterday for Nikon." I said, what are you talking? I don't remember anything. Oh, there was no. some hashcon. Hashtag I, Nikon. Yeah, I had posted a, a picture of me, and it, it was I hashtagged the camera that I made it with, and mm -hmm. apparently I was it came up in the what's best of. And you know what? I went to look at it today, and it's all completely different content. And it got me to think, wow, you know, that's actually pretty cool because. It's just like this changing pulse of what's going on from day to day. You know, I don't see why people get so upset about it. I think they get upset about it because it reminds them of Twitter, and people are very like platform specific and and loyal. And I don't know where this loyalty comes from. I think in this sense of pride, like you didn't make Google Plus. You know, like what do you? It's like if I make a photo and you like Scott's photo um, better than mine, like. 
Oh my goodness! Scream up and down because you like his photo. <laughs> Although it would, be, it would be entertaining, but no, you don't. You have know, <laughs> whatever happened to just acceptance? I think we need a lot more of that. Yeah. But, um, well, there's a lot of you know a lot of jealousy in life, not just on Google Plus, and so you know. Yeah, I think it's cool to be able to to poke in and and see what's going on, like in a little ticker or just the. Hey, this word's hot, and it might be ridiculous why it's it's trending, but um. It's, what it's, yeah, there's a lot of it's one man's treasure is another man's garbage. Yeah, it's I curious. I, I don't see any harm in it. And so you guys are in agreement that you don't like cat pictures, dog pictures, and animated gifs, or? <laughs> uh, I don't know. If, if they flood my stream, then I get annoyed with them. But I, as it's I said, the some of them one. are great. Some of them, are, you know, the the thing about the trending topics that bothered me before is it's it'll be some dumb animated gif, and I'll have like nine hundred million pluses or something, and it's it all I see every time I look at it, I'm like, okay, I don't want to see that anymore. If it were like a change, like hashtags, I love the hashtags because that is a constant changing thing. So the trending topic, I think I have a different opinion of than the, the old hot posts or whatever it was called, which I yeah. did not appreciate And actually they still exist. I mean, it says explore, but when you hit explore, it still says the title that's hot on it, so, which is whatever. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, 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 I look at it, but I don't, I don't, not religiously. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, Jason, you hate all, you can't stand cats, dogs, and underneath gifts, or depends on. Dude, I love animals. I, I don't, I don't know that I want to see um, 500 pictures of kittens with <laughs> someone's clever nonsense scrawled across <laughs> the top of them, taken with. Unless, some, unless you laugh out loud and then. Yeah, taken with some Kodak disc camera left <laughs> over from 1988, processed at CVS. Yeah, I don't know. Do they, do they ever do something like that where they, they get a bunch of photographers and they like, here's like an iPhone. And now you guys now have two hours. Go out there and take the iPhone pictures, and then I mean, it's just it, it's still it's still I know there's so the, the the focus and the and and the lighting and everything, but I don't know. Is there I mean, is there is that's not necessarily a true way to determine it, but isn't it more about what you're capturing, what your vision is, and how you're doing it? Isn't like that like. If somebody knows all the techniques, they know the lights, they know the they know the focus, they know everything. Yet they, and then someone else doesn't. But the person that doesn't is capturing more interesting things. Isn't that? Isn't that? Isn't it more about that or not? Really? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like your subject matters. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's like my wife tells me we're taking pictures of a birthday. She, you know, she's like, you don't have to light this. Just <laughs> capture the moment. And she, you know, at the end of the day, you either have a picture of the birthday. Or you don't have a picture of the birthday because you took the time to go get your light, and then it was done. And so, right, capture the moment. The moment yeah. Capture the moment. Yeah, it may be a piece of art, but at the end of the day, it's either a memory for you. You're, you're, there's two different. I mean, there's a lot of different goals for photography. So it's if people, you know, like the picture that they took. Like there's some horrible pictures of models that I've seen, and you know, it's it's on a wrinkled sheet, and she's wearing some awful outfit, and the pose is bad. But the photographer remembers that moment and says, you know, I had a great connection with the model. She was really pretty and I was really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like that picture. So I'm going to post it because I have a happy, happy memory with that picture. They That evokes an emotion. To them, that picture has meaning. So I guess it's, at the end of the day, it, it's it's your picture. You know, the art is in the eye of the beholder, you know. And we all have an opinion on what paparazzi shoot, but then they have an opinion on what we shoot. It's just it, art, you know. It's amazing to me. I mean, I see sometimes I'll see the sky and the colors in the sky. They're just awesome that I want to take a picture of it. And I'm sure you guys can do without without all these like sunsets and, and sunrises. You've seen them all. Or like, do you think that that, that, that too many people it, would do that? It's or? Not about the photo. It's not about like that. It's a photo of a cat or a photo of anything. Like I dig photography. I've always dug photography since I was a little kid. I've just I'm a visual person. I like to see pictures of things that are taken. Well, I like you know, technically awesome pictures that look beautiful, and I like really crappy, grainy, photy, you know, crappy camera photos of really awesome things, you know, like who doesn't want to see someone that looks like they're falling off of a cliff, whether right. it was taken with a great camera or, you know, just... I like pictures that tell the moment that show a funny thing happen, like, they might not be pretty to look at, but you can see that in that picture... That it something crazy happened, or some 
like someone was doing something or someone in the background. Like it tells us more of like you're there in the moment, tells you the story. It might not be pretty to look at, but you're like, oh wow, that's really yeah. cool. That's funny. Like the face and the hand and the, everything I mean, I think, he's doing. What I think becomes an issue is what you see in on social media sites, right? And, and I'm not saying here. I'm saying everywhere. You know, is you get these people that this is all they do. It's they, they just keep throwing one after the other these right. these images out there, and it doesn't even matter to me if it's if it's just really crappy images. Um, I just don't like seeing people that are just sharing stuff. Like it's just <laughs> I don't like sharing after the other <laughs> after the other. There's no conversation. It's just a treadmill of yeah. here's another picture. Here's another awesome picture. Here's another awesome picture. Here's a, there's, there, you don't know who they are, what they do, why they're doing it, why they're sharing the picture, and that's like a little creepy. That's just a little weird. Yeah, it's it's like, it is kind of annoying. Everything you see, yeah. Right. I, I, when I see those people, I just drop them off my circles that are in my circles because, well, they're not useful. Although there's a couple um, that I try and find. I'll try and name that one. Some that, that share some really great stuff, but isn't it kind of creepy that, that it's going on and you, and you don't know anything about them because they don't tell you anything at all other than here's another picture. I, I just picture them as like OCD, like just click, click, like focused, staring at the screen in, in some kind of a trance-like state unable to stop even if they wanted to. Right. No, I hear you. And you know what? I, I'm guilty. I've been taking crazy amount of pictures. I will take so many pictures. I'll share and I... But I always make sure that there's content. Like, yeah, there's text you're, along you're, with my pictures. You're, you're, you're so complete. You're the polar opposite of what I'm saying. That's great. sweet of you. Uh, do you guys still use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and, and everything less, more the same? LinkedIn's Super huge. Plus? Yeah. LinkedIn's absolutely tremendous. Um, can't say enough good things about LinkedIn. I don't add anyone on LinkedIn. Don't add me on LinkedIn unless you have a job for me. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm not be your friend anywhere, but I get a lot of requests on LinkedIn, and it's you know that's private, that's business. That's you heard it here first. Jason Joseph uh, wants you to leave the app alone on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. Him Google Plus. That's it. Invite him to a hangout, especially if you're a pretty girl. But even if you're a pretty pretty close to a pretty girl, that. That, right. Moderately pretty girl. Moderately. Moderately. Girl. If you're if you're not pretty, but you have so many other amazing things, there's a chance. Yeah. If you think you may be pretty <laughs> five years from now, still. <laughs> if, you, if you have something to offer, what, Scott, what about yeah. you? Now that we've oh, lost yeah. our entire female audience. Yeah, I know I still use Facebook and, and Flickr and uh, Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn a bit for the software stuff. Not so much for photography. Um, yeah, it's all good, but I, I, this is definitely my home. I mean, I, I spend way more time on Google Plus than I do on, on all should. the other ones combined. Cool. Uh, Pinterest for me is a lot of people that know me. Huge. Um, in the nine weeks that I've been on there, I've uh, close to well, uh, over 550 people that didn't know my blog existed that now know my blog exists. I got a call for uh, to shoot a job for a um, motorcycle outfit in September coming up that we're, we're in the talks of doing, um, which, was, which was amazing. And um, cool. also, I just kind of came across something that came across my radar today. If anyone's familiar with the, a, an app called SpringPad or a, um, a website called SpringPad, they're kind of like Evernote. Um, they completely overhauled their system. Everything looks completely different, and they added social to it. And now you're able to, it looks almost exactly like Pinterest. You're able to um, explore different areas, um, different topics. I'm not too sure how this is going to tie in, and if it's going to be a, the type of thing that it will uh, be a place where you can dump off work and have it create backlinks to your website, which is great for Google search engine optimization. Um, but it looks like there's that possibility. Um, and also, it's great because it gives you, it affords you the ability, if you work with a creative team or if you work with a team in business, you can have private um, collaborative boards where you're sharing all different types of information, be it um, voice memos, photos, notes, um, checklists, uh, maps, anything. And, and have them be private, which you can't do in many places. Um, I think the only thing that Evernote may have it beat on 
um, is the fact that it does text recognition and photographs and the fact that it's integrated into a lot of other uh, platforms and um, where you can send from one platform to Evernote. But really, really, really powerful, interesting um, platform that I think is worth a look. Yeah, and there's just so many of them, and like, that's really what it is. I mean, it's I, right. think, I think you can get a try stuff out and find what you like, but the idea that I'm going to take a picture and then I'm going to go to like Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter and Plus, and then if I want to put on Flickr and Tumblr and and then if I want to put my website and my blog and this and that, if I want to, you know, it's like, and then you're like, after you do all that, you're like, wait a second, nobody saw it. I posted it too late. I posted it too early. Now it's time yeah. to reshare. You know? Time is huge. Like, Timing is everything. Yeah, but it's also like, you never know who's going to see it. When and that's one, if we're talking about, uh, there's a ton of features I want to see, but one feature I love to see is for Google Plus to be, to recognize, like Path has a thing where you go, you just go to sleep, but what if when you log out, you basically click something that says either going to sleep or or done for the night or whatever, whatever, you know, something that indicates you'll be gone for a while, and then Google Plus knows that you're going to be gone for a while, or click it, whenever, maybe you're still logged on, click on, I am not here for a long time, set time. So then Google Plus goes around and finds what's important to you based on maybe circles, based on relevance, based on whatever, and so then it sends you a digest of all the stuff you missed instead of you having to look through profiles, and circles, and streams, and that way you have in the morning, you you know, but then you miss more stuff because you're busy looking at, you know, it's always stuff. Yeah, it's like when does it end? Yeah, it doesn't. There's no way. But, it's like uh, half. It, you know, it asks you when you're going to sleep and yeah, you wake up. Saying, yeah. That's pretty interesting. It's interesting, but you can only, you can't keep up with that. And also, like, when you wake up, do you think the first month, the first thing I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking, oh, wait, I better put that I woke up on path, you know? Occasionally, right. if I, I might do go to sleep because I might be looking at it, but I don't know. I was uh, thinking about using that to track my sleeping patterns, <laughs> yeah, to, but good. but not share them, you know, because not to bore. When I realized that you can hide some of these things, so I could literally make a, a running track of that. Maybe I just need one of those one of those bracelets, right? The jawbone bracelet. The only, yeah, but the only thing that sucks is like, can you imagine if you've already been up for two hours, you put your awake. You well, then that's two hours you're already awake. You can't like fix that. So. Yeah. That's kind of once you miss it, you miss it. Somewhere. What did we yeah, do in the 80s? What did we do? An alarm clock? What? A real alarm clock with a radio. I always think I like of Back that. to the Future. What? I like If That Then This, or If if This Then That. Uh, Rodney Pike, the d illustriously talented um, caricature artist. Caricature. Rodney Pike is awesome. He is. Yeah. He's and I've been in real life. That's, that's my boy. Nice Did you, he's good. He good. Yeah, good. it's funny. I met him at the NYC Hurl, and then two weeks, week, two, two weeks later, I met you. Well, he turned me on to, to that site. Or actually, no, I don't think he turned me on to it, but it's a friend of his that makes it. That's what it was. So it's a friend. She, it was her brainchild, and it lets you link all these different sites. So you know, like you can do an Instagram here and have that action trigger somewhere else, and have that action trigger somewhere else, and it's like automation. I can tell you right now, if you follow me on Twitter, Jason Joseph NYC, you'll get a thank you. Oh, direct. Yeah, the direct thing's okay, although there is a sense of like it being a direct message, an automated thing and not real, but yeah, whatever. It's cool. It's just something like with back, your friend Rebecca Pearl. I got a direct message from her. Thank you, me telling me to follow her on Facebook, which is okay, I guess. But I follow you on Plus. That's all I need to know. You sing here. You don't sing <laughs> on Facebook. She uh, she stopped by last night. She dropped two new tunes, and one of them just knocked me out. And took one of my favorite songs of hers, and and I don't know, man. I think it might have knocked it into second place. She really knocked the ball out of the park, and uh, yeah, she's gonna have some good stuff coming out. All right. I won't touch what you said about her job by top. Anyway, so like you said number two, but you said two new. All right. Anyway, that's awesome. Rock stars that crap at Jason Joseph's house. That's not what he said, but it's funnier. I gotta admit. <laughs> Uh, she's, she's Rebecca Pearl, if you're watching. We love you. I can't stand you, by the way, Rap. What? I can't stand you. She can't? No, I can't. Oh, uh, then why are you here? <laughs> That's why you're sitting. <laughs> uh, where was that? Is there a favorite, is there a story on Google Plus that, that melts your heart? That is there something that happened, like a connection, a job, or, yes. or yeah? Is yes. Scott, do you have something that you want to go first with? No, I just like doing the retouch hangouts. I met so many people yeah. through the, the hangouts that are cool. You know, being able to, uh, to hang with some of the folks whose books I've read and, you know, work I've admired is awesome. You know, that's, 
I don't I don't have any specific story that hangs out like that or sticks out, but so much so many good hangouts in my memory. Yeah. It's amazing what you said. You can meet people they might not be superstars or celebrities in the world, but the internet and you know, it's like, yeah, that's just a regular person and they have a following and you know, they they didn't always have a following. They were you know, they built it up. What about you, Jason? You seem to be right, as soon as they said it, your eyes lit up. Yeah. Um I think that You'll know who I'm talking about. You're asking about a, a touching story, or I don't know how you worded it, but um, I was just yeah, drifted off, kind of thinking about the subject. Um, Milos, um, really great guy, a musician um, from I believe the Netherlands, who passed away just recently, last month, who we met in a hangout over over Christmas and. Um, yeah, I mean, it just ripped my heart out. He died in a, in a kayaking accident, and um, I think a lot of people here knew him, and it's amazing how real the connections are that you make here in Hangouts and the friends that you make, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess just we should all be a little bit nicer to each other, tolerate each other a little bit more, and love each other a whole hell of a lot more because, you know, we're all in it together and we don't know how much time we have here. So just want to say that in his honor because he was a really warm, wonderful guy. Cool. Yeah, it's amazing uh, what what can happen in with this space and who you can meet. And then we do, for those of you watching, we do venture outside of the box. And we have met each other in real life. We have done it. It's been interesting, and uh, foreign friendships have been formed, and people are flying all over the place. I, I wish I wish I could do more. And I know Chicago, they're having a one, and Miami, and Canada, Ottawa, and, and Edinburgh, and we have one in New York, South and Southwest, D.C., so many different girls happening, or hangouts in real life, or whatever you want to call them. So, yeah, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, and uh, thanks for that, Jason. And I remember seeing posts about them. Uh, I can't thank you two enough. It's been a riveting time. Uh, and Scott, thanks so much for showing us your work. If you stand by just a few minutes, we'll wrap up. Stand by uncomfortably, then we'll go into Conversations Plus. If you stay for two minutes, stay for as long as you want. We'll, we'll hang out. We'll see who comes in. And uh, it'll be more more tent, more relaxed and not really question, question. Uh, next week, we have Mike Searle, artist, funny guy, awesome man, very nice guy. If you guys know Mike Searle with beard and and always, always funny. Uh, Jane Allen will be here May 3rd. Guitarist Mike Gibson May 10th. I'm working on a special cooking show where I might actually go to Lee Allison's house on May 17th in person in Queens. I will go to his house and he will cook with me critiquing his every move. No. Uh, I'm about that mean. Maybe we'll invite some more people over. We'll see. Uh, so thanks for everyone watching and having conversations. Thanks for checking us out. Conversations Plus coming right up uh, with me, Jason, Scott. I think stick around. I appreciate it. More fun questions. Uh, we'll check out some more photos. Maybe Jason will show some of his babies if he wants to. Yeah, thank, thank, thanks a lot, too, man. It's a great opportunity. A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. I mean, we got into a lot of stuff. This uh, was worth all every penny of the forty-five bucks I paid you. Forty-five. Wow. All right. So now that you know my going rates, if you'd like to pay me or be myself, anyway, uh, Jason Joseph, funny. I'm gonna call you JJ from now on. Uh, he's like, I hate that, man. I hate that. I hate that so much. I just, I just hate that. Uh, so go through some photos. Find some photographers if you haven't. Circle Jason and Scott and if you want to. And, and, and a bunch of different ones. We, we mentioned mentioned them again. Keith, was it uh, Scott something? Corey, Corey Albertson. Corey, Corey Albertson and Jason mentioned yours again? Kevin Knight. And Kevin Knight. And, and so check that out. And you can hashtag photography. Find people, pictures, and some of these memes, not memes, uh, uh, pages, I should say, hashtags. I get sometimes the memes and the hashtags get confusing. But uh, so go out there and, you know, even if Jason and Scott don't care, go out, snap some pictures, put your pictures up, and if you see something that really gets you, inspires you, and you want to capture something captured, put it up sh and, and, and let people know why or what or, or not. I mean, I know we didn't talk about that. We'll talk about that in Conversations Plus. Like about explaining your photos or not. I know a lot of people hate doing that, uh, and most don't. 
But uh, thanks again to all of you. Good night. Good night in, in all over the world, Alaska. Uh, an RIP to uh, Dick Clark, who himself, great host, and many memories. New Year's Eve won't be the same. Uh, and uh, good night, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Darkness.